Yo, this is Ray Daniels, and today's show is presented by Track.co, where you get to monetize yourself. Hey, what's up? It's your girl Tamara, a.k.a. Girl from Harlem. And what's up, everybody? This is Ray Daniels, the culture referee. And this is the guy show. Let's give it up. And, and, fuck all that. We're going to do this right. I have College Park's very own. Um, I remember when I was coming up, first of all, JD don't even know I live in Fayetteville because of you. Because of me? No, no bullshit. When I moved to Atlanta... In 91, uh, we lived off Bethsaida Road, and, you know, they would be like, if you keep going straight down, that's what Jermaine's house is. And by this time, I might have saw, you know, by this time, I might have saw one of, your, it was one of your music videos or something. They was like, he lived right in there. And I'm like, man, I'm going to live in Fairville one day. Man. Fuck that. I'm, 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 I literally live in Fairville because of you and Holyfield. He don't know that. But we got 12-time Grammy nominated. He sold over 400 million. I feel like sometimes we be, like, really, like, not allowing the world should know, but I'm going to get this anyway. 12-time Grammy nominated, over 400 million, rec- 400 million records sold. Kid, dad, star, turn. I didn't write none of this. My brother, I'm just letting you know I know all of this. Songwriter, record producer, record executive, entrepreneur, and DJ showed us. Let's get it. And we got my brother, Jermaine Dupree, in this bitch. <laughs> what up, what up? And I'm like, and I'm telling y'all, like, I'm going to stand for this dude because he's from where I'm from. And all I wanted him to know was my name. And I remember the first time he ever said my name, I was like, nigga, y'all can't tell me shit. JD said, what's up, Ray? To me, nigga, he said, what's up, oh, Ray? <laughs> I swear to God, he'd be funny. We was at the Epic Christmas party. He was like, what up, Ray? I was like, that nigga know my name. And they was like, yeah, he know you, nigga. You know, they like take credit for everything. I told him my name. Don't worry about nothing. But uh, yeah, we got to, we got JD here. So Tamara, I'm going to throw it to you. Let's do well, this. I want to ask first, how did we end up even having the honor of getting JD on the show? Well, I have the honor of JD texting me. He <laughs> corrects me. Like, he's like, yo, Ray, do this. And I was telling him, I'm like, sometimes I use examples and I might, you know, talk up the cusp and say like this album, like the Bobby Brown shit. JD was um, like, yo, she, he went back to LA for the second album, not the third. He was like, yo, man, we from the same, you know, he's like, I'm just keeping you sharp. So I was like, um, man, I need you to come keep me sharp. <laughs> Shut the fuck up, nigga. Like, I need you to come like straight it up. And then we, it was the one thing we were speaking about we were spe- when I was saying how labels drop artists, drop a label and keep an artist. And I use So So Deaf as an example only because I remember watching Bow Wow do an interview and he was like, I don't have Jermaine no more. I don't know what that means. And he was kind of like trying to figure out how to regroup and become his own man. So I just remember like, how the fuck does that happen? So I wasn't even in the game. I was trying to get in the game. So when I, I use an example, he was like, that ain't totally true. I want to clear up that. I want to show you how I do my business. I'm like, bro, show me. So that's yeah. how we're here. Um, so I guess that's where we started. Yeah, let's, let's go by <laughs> yeah, so I mean, I think, I think like um, a majority of people in the music industry, they have to do that because that's how their deals are done. Um, my deal was pretty much fully blown um, out to cater to me, right? But at the same time, um, I'm a producer and songwriter first. And I find these artists and the artists and the partners, when the success starts, they start forgetting that. They start forgetting. And I guess because they deal with so many people that's not like me, that that that's the majority of what's going on. And when he when he said this, that's what it was. He was speaking on the majority. I'm yeah. I'm 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 different. I'm just completely different. So when I left Columbia, um, my goal was to prove to them that you guys didn't sign Bow Wow. You didn't even want to, you didn't know what to do with Bow Wow. You guys didn't care about Jagged Edge. You wasn't looking for Jagged Edge before I brought Jagged Edge up here. And you know what I'm saying? Same thing to the artists. Like these guys that y'all talking to after I leave, you think they they care about you? Mm. They never chased y'all one bit. They never asked y'all to do nothing. They never told y'all to do nothing. That's they only know you guys because of me. So if I leave, what you think gonna happen? Mm. That's the conversation I was having with the artist, you know. Um, this is you but, acting as a manager or a producer? No, as, at the time? as a label. Oh, as a label. They all signed to yeah, it. Yeah, as a label because you know ultimately, when you, if you have your deal right, it's it's everybody's involved. When a label leaves a label, yes, mm-hmm. everybody's involved. Like Brat left, you know. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Brett, Brett went with me. Y'all don't, oh, y'all don't wow. pay no attention. Oh, so they no, had a Brett choice. said she's rolling with you to the wheels. Yeah, that's she what I'm made saying. that very like, clear. When you, when, I mean, my label. I don't, that's yeah. what I'm saying. That's what, I'm try, that's what I was trying to say about everybody else. I don't know what everybody else's deal was, but I know what my deal was. My artist could have left with me oh, wow. if they wanted to. 
it was gonna take a thing. Yeah, it's a, you know it's legal. It's not a, a situation where it's like we everybody could just yeah. go with everybody <laughs> cool, but they all could have left. Mm. Um, um, ultimately, I didn't even want them to leave though. <laughs> I, I, me, I didn't want Bow Wow to leave because I thought that it was going to uproot his project and put him in a bad position. Got you. Same way with Jagged Edge. I thought it was going to uproot their pro, they whole thing. This is what they built. This is where they was at. This was their home. So I wasn't really like pro everybody coming yeah, with me. Exactly. I was pro Jermaine Dupree is going to leave this over here. And I'm gonna go to Arista and do the exact same thing that I did at Columbia. And when you went to Arista, you turned it up. I, I forgot you. This is Young Bloods. Yeah, Young Bloods, Bone shit. Crusher, Bone Crusher, Jaquan, Anthony Hamilton. This was the same. I had the same mentality. Like so, my mentality every time that I've ever moved from a label, from label, label, I'm always thinking about what I believe I do. I bring the artists. I dress the artists. I talk to the artists. I write for the artists. I do all of this. And I'm saying like, no label can hold me. It's no label. You could listen. You could you you think you're doing something by saying we're gonna hold your artists. Cool. I'm gonna go over here and I'm gonna make just as many artists. Now they might not be as big as yeah. the artists is over here. That's not. I don't have a. You know, I don't have the, the the knowledge of that. I just do what I do. But I'm saying, when you have the creative mindset, I feel like I have. I don't I don't ever sit around and um get locked into what leaving the artist is. See some of these guys that CEOs, they don't write the music and they don't create, so they have to put they have to hold on to that artist <laughs> yeah. for dear life, right? Like whatever they gotta do. So then that's when they start to tug a war with the artist. My thing is listen. I can make another one of these artists. <laughs> I can make another artist. That's I mean, I don't believe that I could outdo people. Yeah. But I'm always saying, like, if push come to shove, I gotta go find a new young artist. I gotta go find this artist. I gotta go find this artist. That's what I do. I, I go find artists. I'm not trying to replace nobody, but I never let I never want these labels to believe I, that that was just my mindset. So I was just to answer the question. I never wanted the label to ever believe that they had me. You know, in the corner. where I had to, yeah. you know, because I, but by the way, I wanted out of my Columbia yeah. deal. It's yeah. not like I was, I was, it was a thing where we got into any, I, I got to a point and I, and, and by the way, no disrespect <laughs> to anybody out there at Columbia. I wish I wouldn't have felt like that, but I was young and I was hungry for, um, some shit that didn't even matter. Exactly. <laughs> so I'm, I, you know what I mean? I would take responsibility for the yeah. dumbness of me wanting to be out of the deal. Um, but I wanted to be out of the deal because I didn't I didn't think they were moving in the direction that I felt like I wanted to be moving in. And I seen other people in their other labels. You know, I saw Clive Davis taking care of Puffin them in a different kind of way. I saw Clive taking care of um LaFace, LaFace in a different yeah. type of way. You know, one thing about me, what people don't understand is I never had no person in front to validate Jermaine Dupree. You that know what reminds I'm me of like when you said that Babyface said to you like Oh, you got this little record. Let me see you do it again. So you kind of had this complex, like, I need to be able to do more than just do this with one rec one artist at one label. I need to be able to do this kind of all across the board multiple times. So Yeah, but I mean, well, he set that tone about production. But I'm saying as far as, like, if you look at, like, all the labels, right? If you look at every boutique label, like So So Def, mm -hmm. they always got this person who brought them in, mm -hmm. um, you know, whether it was Darp and Bad Boy, yep. L.A. brought them to Arista. Whether it was Arista, Clive Davis brought L.A. in. Mm -hmm. um, whether it was Def Jam, Irv Gotti brought R Rough Riders, and if I'm not mistaken, uh, Rock, 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 Rock yeah, Rockefeller, right? Sure. Um, and Murder Inc. So all of these, and so that means that you know Leo is responsible and. Kevin Lyles, they responsible for all these side these boutique labels. Um, so so that there's nobody there that brought me in there. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? So therefore, every decision that was made for so so death, I made it, good mm -hmm. or bad. Mm -hmm. um, and I'm here in Atlanta trying to navigate um, life when everything is happening in New York. You know, you gotta think at this time period, there's nothing going on in Atlanta. It's nothing happening in Atlanta. 
that's business wise. When you and say that's, time that's, frame, what time frame are you referring to? From ninety two till you know whenever you know, I, and that's that's one of the things why I came to just even talk on the show today because I just like I, I, I you know, it's interesting to me that people know everything about. Jermaine Dupree, except, or they don't know everything, but they talk about everything except for the business part, mm-hmm. right? The business part of social death and the business part of Jermaine Dupree gets left out because I was here and it wasn't nobody else here, right? It was happening and wasn't nobody else here to see it, right? Um, you, like, I, I'm, honestly, you're the starter. So I, my, lead, my lead up to you was like, as far as Atlanta goes, because I think we could compare <coughs> your record to... Shit, everybody. You, I mean, you, you, you name a hit maker up, you, you can measure up against them. But I was saying, he's one of the only people that you can say he's the goat of, of this city. Because you got to remember, before the podcast, I'm talking to Tricky. I'm talking to Dot. Da- everybody we talking to was like, shit. Jermaine was the one. Like you know, we was you know, it was like everybody was all new coming up, and they was like, shit. Jermaine was the first one out the fucking gate. It was like whether what six times leather. Like he was before all of us. So I feel like. But it's like, we could say you the GOAT, but then it still makes you underrated. Because I feel like, because I was like, no bullshit. We was in there. I was listening. I was like, damn, he just this? Damn, he just the fuck? Why the fuck is he so quiet? Like, it's like, I'm like, this nigga don't talk, y'all. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm, like, I'm like, this nigga don't talk, y'all. He ain't going, yeah. for some reason, he ain't going to come in here and talk his shit. But I'm like, nigga, look at this shit he's in. Yeah, I mean, that ain't, that ain't, you know, ultimately, that's not, that's, that's not the goal. You know, I, well, I mean. Talking shit, I think talk- that's like a new thing that people do. <laughs> but I mean, I, m- me personally, I just prefer to get it done. Like, mm. I just prefer to like me talking shit don't do nothing for me. I guess that's what it is. Yeah. I gotta get it done. If I got an idea, me getting it done does more than me walking around saying, "Nigga, you know who fuck I am, nigga." <laughs> like, but, 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 I gotta get it done. But let me but let me tell you something. Though. Here's the thing. I was one of the main questions I was gonna ask you. You already answered. I was gonna say, "What did you see yourself as? Like writer, producer." Uh, CEO, uh, artist, like, what do you see or something? You said I'm more writer producer. That's what I am. So when I look at it, I'm like, like because you've contributed so much. No, I said first. No, no, but that's, what, that's what I meant first. by like first. That's what I meant yeah. by like what you see yourself first. But I almost feel like because some niggas do one thing very good, and the shit that he do, they gonna pop that shit right. Yeah. Like whole first part of his career, he was rapper businessman and then slowly he became like agent or oh, he got his it was like he, he just built rock nation to conglomerate but i look at you like you literally because i forgot you turned up arista you turned that shit the fuck up nah bro like you gotta <laughs> stop that shit nah, just, nah, i'm not being funny <laughs> now, be out real quick. you gotta you gotta stop that shit because sometimes i'm just nah, but, nah, 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 nah. but let me tell you what i mean but like some people some people follow the flow and some people are the flow yeah some people are like Nigga, I'm the flow. So when you said that, I was like, damn, I forgot he left. And then Bone Crusher, Young Bloods, fucking all of the shit you did, you turned Arista up. And then it's like, I feel like you just need to have a Denzel Washington, like, I'm King Kong around this motherfucker. I just feel like you need to do that one time. <laughs> yeah, don't, I mean, ultimately, like I said, I feel like I personally, my, my, my personal opinion behind this is that in, in music, it's always a one and a two, mm-hmm. right? So therefore, when it's a one and a two, it's always easier for one and two to pop shit. Yes. Right? I feel like ain't no two. Yeah. It's just one. Yeah. Me. That's it what I'm saying. Yeah. Two. Talk your I'm shit. I'm not popping shit. <laughs> no, 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 stop. No, 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 I'm oh, saying. I'm not, I'm not popping shit. I'm, I'm just, I'm saying, I'm being 100% transparent. I don't believe that it's anybody else that, off the mindset of what I just told you, I was at a label. I left my whole shit willing to leave it to go to another label and didn't I didn't have not one scare or one fear that nah. you was not gonna hear so so deaf again. Exactly. I went I came in the door with Bone Crusher. Yeah. And that's why you I think one of the questions <laughs> is supposed to be <laughs> <laughs> what I said on my tweet, right? About them letting people run labels that don't make music. I walked in the door. <laughs> at Arista. When I when I went to meet with LA, I had the bone question record in my pocket. Yeah. Like, yo, this is what I'm signing first. Right now. Exactly. Right. Soon as you give me the deal, <laughs> this song is coming out. It is smashing. That's how you're supposed to make records. And I'm saying I left Columbia knowing, JD, you might have fucked up. 
Yeah. Right? You leaving. You got Lee Bow Wow over here. You leaving Jagged Edge. I came through the door with Bone Crusher, the brat. Mm-hmm. Young Bloods was already there. Yeah. Right? They put him on a social death. Yeah, they got they, they was getting ready to lose. Yeah. They was getting ready to let them go. Yeah. Right? And I'm like, no, you can't let the Young Bloods go. It's like, this is my crew. They yeah. from my home, right? Yeah. So I took the Young Bloods. They ain't have no record. I called Lil John. I said, yo, listen, I need a record today mm. on the Young Bloods. Like, all of this, you know what I'm saying? I just was yeah. moving, moving, yeah. moving. Um, and that's, that's, I don't believe that you even hear people talk like that in the music industry, period. So I'm saying that's why, that's why I feel like it's never a, a, a hooray, Ray yeah. JD, because it's like, it's just one, it's, a, it's I'm one. It's what you I'm, do. I'm just one person doing yeah. this. It's yeah. not a bunch of people doing yeah. this. You know, like, it's just like, it's a, it's a DJ, like, say for instance, Khaled, right? You yeah. can say Khaled is a DJ. Then you got D nice, yeah. right? There's mm-hmm. things that you can compare exactly. it to exactly. to be like, okay, blah 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 blah. Who can you compare me to, right? That that does that, like you know what I'm saying? Like even Puff, if like we talk about, <laughs> that's yeah. Puff. Oh shit! Where you from? Now I'm gonna say, no, don't start that. Don't start that. Harlem. Don't start from? that. She from Harlem. That's good. I'm I'm not gonna say anything about Puff, but I'm saying <laughs> just take Puff for instance. Puff never left Arista. Mm-mm. And took Bad Boy to another company mm. and, and got the flow. A, as loud as it was when it was at Arista. When I, I mean, yeah, when I went to Arista, the reason New York plays down south music on the radio is because of me. Period. Bone Agreed. Crusher, south Bone side? Crusher and the Young Bloods, <laughs> <laughs> Bone Crusher and the Young Bloods were all over Hot 97 in a way that like nobody could ever imagine. Mm. And I hired. DJ Envy to work for me. Yes. Like Envy came from, is, you know, y'all know him from New York, but yeah. the people that know Envy. He was a clue. He's a clue um, team. Yeah, he was part of, he yeah. was part of So So Dep. Um, So I'll, my attack on New York radio and the New York streets from the South is like no other. Like nobody, no other company, nothing. Not, not as far as <laughs> back then. Stop. Now everybody else moving forward. They, that door opened because I was out there beating the streets. Mm-hmm. I, I, I gotta say something, cause <clears throat> no bullshit, dog. You so you gotta understand. Atlanta has a lot of Atlanta has a perception, right? And I always felt like you know Atlanta didn't appreciate what JD did outside of Atlanta, cause Atlanta's a, its own ecosystem. Like you know, mm-hmm. if you as long as you do something for somebody here, we love you. But JD was, I you really walked so all these other motherfuckers could run. No bullshit, bro, because you know, I'm being for real because T.I. broke through on radio on the Never Scared remix, right? That was like, that, no, well, Never Scared first. Yeah, that's a good point. Never scared. Nah, for real. No, hmm. I'm telling you, like, T.I., and not only that, we don't acknowledge your runs. You got to understand something. We were in the room playing your records, and I played Bow Wow Like You, and she was like, <laughs> this is my childhood. I did this. And then I play Crisscross fucking tonight. No, 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 no. So, uh, all right. And I'm like, nigga. Nigga, I, we had a backwards day at high, at McNair Middle School because of him. <laughs> no, I'm being for real. That we, had a, that we have a backwards day yeah, at McNair Middle School for you. And then we talking about you leaving that. And then here comes Bow. Here comes, before that is then you got Escape. And I just think, I just think you, I think because you've been having such a fight. And I also think it's something very humbling about, about leaving Atlanta and going to New York and L.A., right? It's very, it's almost like, I don't give a fuck who you are. You feel like you got to prove yourself. Like, y'all niggas don't know what we doing down there, right? So I feel like with you, you just always had this, you was always in the middle of this fight, whether it was putting Jay-Z on money in the thing. And then, and then this is like, Hove was, Hove was Hove to, the, to New York, but he wasn't Hove to Atlanta. We yeah. liked him, but he wasn't whole here. Like nobody in Atlanta was bumping reasonable doubt. What I thought that was like ah, a national no, 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 treasure. No, 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 no. That's a national treasure to hip hop heads. But I spent that summer that reasonable doubt came out in New York, and that's how I got put up on it. And I came to New York. You gotta remember when reasonable doubt drops, Biggie is still alive. Yeah, mm-hmm. running the game. Mm-hmm. So now here come Hove. He's like everybody in New York say he's next, and JD got him on it. JD was the first person to have all of this shit going on, but I think Atlanta didn't understand because of where we were, everything you were doing. And then I didn't, I don't, I don't, you know, like I said, I don't, I don't talk about the fight. 
You know what I mean? I knew it was a fight. I've been, been a fight since I started. I'm f- I'm from here. You know what I'm saying? I'm from Atlanta. So from 12, from 12 to, I mean, I start <laughs> in the business from 12 years old to, till, you know, till 27, 30 years old. It's been a, you know, conscious, conscious, constant fight, not conscious. Yeah. It's been a constant fight to get people to believe, to get people to even, you know, like, this this era of time that I'm talking about with the company. Here I am with a whole company right here on, right here, what's this yeah, Piedmont? No, 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 right no, on no, Piedmont. Piedmont. Yep. Um, I got ten staff members working for me, right? I got a complete deal. You know, one of the things that's the craziest thing that I always hear people say here, even in Atlanta, is that people say LaFace brought record companies to the city. Like that's far fetched. So so death. By the way, I wanted people to say it, so, so I need to be. I want so, to. Let's go. So so death was here. You know, so so death was here. I had a full on my own staff. I had my own overhead. I had my own building. I was hiring. I hired more people in this city than damn near anybody. We have. We, we have. We, we gonna talk about social death university I mean, and all you know the graduates I mean? like, of that school. Little John comes from So So Deaf. Scooter, Scooter Braun comes from So So Deaf. Um, Surge, who comes from So So Deaf. I know. I, um, it's a, so many people that worked at the company that, and this era um, was missed because to get people to do press for what was going on at So So Deaf. So if I, if I had the source or whatever was out, um, I think XXL. the source was uh, yeah. XXL was on the end right of it, on but magazine. whatever else was out, rap pages or rap any pages, of these yeah, other yeah. things that was out. Vibe magazine. I used to have to call them and say, "I want you to come write about the brat, or I need a I need a piece about the brat, or whatever we having a conversation about. We want to, we need a piece about Jagged Edge." They would hit me back with, "Well, you know, we don't really have anybody down there to cover the story," and I'm like, "What? What do you mean?" It's like, we just don't have nobody to cover the story. We don't really have no photographers in Atlanta. We don't have no writers. And I'm like, oh, okay. So no matter how popular my groups are, y'all, they're not going to get in y'all magazine because y'all don't have no writers. They was like, no, if y'all, you guys was in New York, you know, we definitely come. You, are you coming to New York anytime soon? And I'm like, what the fuck is going on? So we were, <laughs> and I said this the other night when, when Escape won their award. It's like, Escape should have been got that. Mm-hmm. Thir- there shouldn't be no thirty years for them. They, no, no group sings better than Escape. Okay. I don't care who they are. Any one of your cameras, I'm, I'm looking at you guys. I'm <laughs> telling you, I pop shit about that. <laughs> I will pop shit about my artists. Yes, and I've been saying this. It's no group sounds better than Escape. But anyway, so as as good as Escape was, and as and good as Escape is, I could not get people to do press on Escape because they weren't in New York. Or they wasn't in L.A. So then Columbia would call me and say, Jermaine, you know, we really want to get this press on them, but the, the company is saying they want you to fly them to Atlanta. You got to fly the photographer to Atlanta, and you got to fly the writer to Atlanta. And I'm like, I got to pay for this? That's crazy. And he's like, yes. So I would have to pay. By the way, Atlanta you wasn't. Did it? Yes, I would have to pay to have, like, a vibe writer come talk to my artist. I would have to pay for them to fly to Atlanta. Mm-hmm. Because we didn't have, Atlanta wasn't bursting with people, videographers, and right. it wasn't bursting with, with writers. Um, so this is the stuff I had to deal with in the beginning, and that's why the business side of social death people don't actually talk about because it wasn't, you know, it wasn't no cameras running around my office. I moved from Piedmont once after Escape Brat came out. I moved up Piedmont, and I got a big office. I had 50 people working for me. What? I have 50 employees working it for me. Sure. Meanwhile, you're writing and producing. Yeah, I'm writing and producing everything, everything but I'm signed, and I got my company. So when Bow Wow came out, we was up Piedmont behind Mc, that's a McDonald's up there? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, the McDonald's on the backside by, by the strip club and all that. Yeah. So it was like the backside where you see the highway. My, my building was right there. And it was like, you know, I, yeah, I had 50 people working for me. I had a publishing company. I had, um, and we had we was doing the TV stuff. We was doing everything out of there, and we was doing Crazy. all of this. That's what I'm saying we was doing all of this, and people act like that wasn't happening. Like they don't they don't know that. LaFace never gave me a 
published pro- production deal or anything like that. Uh, you was, was on first. I had a question <laughs> because you came in the game really young. So how did you get this business mindset? Because you kind of put your father onto business. So, like, who was teaching you the ropes? Like, how did you come with such a strong, I'm going to get it done, we're going to get it done, and this is what everybody's going to do mindset? Just watching other people's mistakes. Like, you can learn from everybody. You know what I mean? Like, I, I'm, a, I'm a person that I think that I do that more than – um, you know, like you said, pop shit. I do that more than I pop shit. I just I be watching <laughs> other people. You know, even like this. Like he probably didn't know, expect me to hit him uh, about no Bobby Brown shit. <laughs> I don't got nothing to do with this show. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. I don't have nothing to do with it. But I, but I, I just don't like. I don't want. You know, it's my young brother. I don't yeah. want him to look crazy out yeah. here. And then like, if it's somebody sitting there watching it that's like me, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a historian. With this. <laughs> like he said this, I'm like, no, listen. Bobby Brown went back to them on the third album. By the way, you yeah. just said it again. It's the yeah. third album. It was the third third. He album. went back to them on the third album. The first album. Don't be cruel. Is the second album. Hold on. The first. The, the first, first album had is girlfriend the girlfriend on the stage. Oh, so with, I didn't even with, know about that. Uh oh. Yeah, girlfriend. You just yeah, the, girlfriend. I didn't. I king thought that stage. girlfriend flopped, and that's why he went in and did. No, girlfriend didn't flop, but it was the king of the stage. Album. Yeah. And then he went and did Don't Be Cruel, and then he came right back with them. Them and Teddy on that third album. By the way, y'all, I don't mind being checked. I just want to let y'all know something. Well, my OG, that's why I, sometimes I talk shit, but I only talk shit because I'll dish it, but I could take it. So when mm-hmm. Jermaine hit me, <laughs> no real talk, because when you hit me, I'm showing my team like, hey, man, because sometimes they might send me a clip for Instagram, and I'm like, I don't know, that's a completely, you know, I'm just I'm just going off the cuff. Yeah, but, yeah, no you know, when a when nigga can see it and, you know, he can share it, it, it could come back to you. So he hit me, I was like, nah, I got to get him on because I know I ain't. All the way, I'm only just speaking from examples and usually using examples to sum shit up. I mean, but I don't, like I said, I don't expect everybody to know these things. Like, this this is stuff that, this is what I sit in my studio and talk about and yeah. go through. And I mean, I've been, I, I lived it. I watched Bobby Brown do this. So yeah. I, I actually lived it and I understand it. I know what's going on. All right. So I do want to go back a little bit. So you did mention a tweet. So what your tweet said exactly was... They really be letting niggas that ain't never made no records Jay. run these labels. Jermaine. So you told us what the inspiration was behind it, but what do you think the basic qualifications of someone someone should have in order to run a label? Just the basics. I mean, I don't. I, and by the way, when I send that tweet, I don't want nobody like I. I I'm, no, they, they I'm, should feel away. I'm going. <laughs> no, they should, no, let me tell you why they should feel away because I'm gonna tell him a story. Me and Jermaine would talk when I was at a certain company. I'm not gonna say who. They know who they are. Mm. I got on the phone with Jermaine about an act he was developing. And, you know, I went to, I was like, he was trying to tell me about that. I was like, you ain't got to tell me that shit. You, Jermaine, this, I'm not like you, Jermaine fucking Dupree. You don't got to tell me shit. What you want to do? I'm going to go try to get it done. So I called the people running the company. I'm like, yo, Jermaine, Jermaine, what has Jermaine been doing? I'm like, who gives a fuck? Mm. Because a, a record guy understands that this shit is, see, a nigga that ain't never did this shit, he going to chase the heat. Mm. That's why he chasing the heat. He ain't never did this shit. Right? But a nigga that's a record guy or someone who understands history, he going to be like, go back to him. Fuck that. Even if I got a young dude, I'm going to still say, yo, Jermaine, I got this young fire producer, young fire artist. They doing it. But I just want them to sit up under you for a couple months. Like, what is it going to take for you to come in? That's smart business. So the point is that you should talk your shit because there's no way that someone like you is not getting hit by all of them saying help. Because the biggest thing missing in the music business right now is artist development. Yeah, and but that's, that's you, but that, that's but what you they, do. They don't hit me because of fear. It's a fear. They're, they're, for real. Like, what kind they, of fear? Because they know I'm going to run the company. Mm. It's, they don't, I, you know, and, I, and I'm saying this to say, I don't believe they want the company ran. Nah. They want the company to look like it's doing something. Yeah. You don't, you, because, you know, me out of my common sense, I'm not going to hire somebody that don't know what they're doing mm-hmm. to work in my company. That means I'm just trying to do it just to just for a look, I want somebody that's gonna come in here that's gonna be loud, that's gonna be screaming, that's gonna be wild. Like when when I had Lil John, nobody understood why I had hired Lil John. He didn't even know what ANR was. He asked me like, "What's the an ANR?" And I'm like, "Don't worry about it. You're gonna learn what it is. Mm. I just want the energy that I feel like you have exactly. about yourself." Um, yeah. So I say this to say all of the labels that you know. One, I never really wanted to run a label. That's, you ran that's, Virgin for a hot second, right? Yeah, I, well, yeah. I was at Arista. I was yeah. I was the president of Arista, <laughs> vice president under LA. I I never wanted to run these labels. I I I always want my own. I always wanted yeah. so so deaf. Um, but I also get tired of seeing these labels suffer 
talk about suffering, but don't actually really do what they need to do. And I think that's what I'm saying. Like, you know, if you're going to hire somebody at a company and, you know, you talk about them coming in two months from now, three months from now, and you allow them to come in the company with no music, mm-hmm. right? What, what, why did you hire this person? Like, what's the purpose of hiring them? And then four months after that, they still don't have nothing. Five months after that, they don't have nothing. Then you start, after all the praise, you start tearing them down. Yep. Like, oh, this person. Man, Making they, bad decisions. Yeah, they, well, they, they not good. They, they, don't know, they don't know what they're doing. Yeah. Whoa, wait a minute. <laughs> yeah. You chose a person that didn't know what they was doing out the gate. Right. So so I'm just saying, like, in the world of black music, right, if you got somebody that, that works at a label and they don't and they don't have the audacity to get on a plane themselves and come to Atlanta and go to Magic City and walk around these clubs and listen and see what's going on, talk to the DJs. Why do you have that job or give somebody the power to do that and let them run their shit? But see, that's what I'm saying. That's 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 what I'm saying. I believe that these labels are set up for to find a person to find a person. Yes. Right? That's what they're doing right yes. now. The big the big guys get the CEO and then they go find the person, which is which is dumb business to me Absolutely. because you are you that's that's you're allowing somebody to not actually do anything. Yes. You're paying somebody to not do anything. That's all I was saying with my tweet. I'm not saying it like, hey, here I go, give me a job. I'm just letting people know. This is what's happening in the music business. If you think you're talking to somebody that understands what the fuck is going on, <laughs> newsflash. I, I tell my, I, news. I, listen, I tell my team, I'm like, I know they got the they got the attraction of the building, but when you go in there, none of them are happy because it's not like it used to be. A and our job is not the same. A and our job is research, data, chasing. That's what A and R's do. Because if you look look at historically, like just. Just look at let's just look through a vacuum of the music industry over the last three or four years. How many artists, most of the artists that got signed, maybe 85, 90% of them got signed because they had a record going. Mm-hmm. Right? How many of them got to a second record? Not a second, not a fucking album, not even an album. How many of them got to a second record? No, they not. So not. I mean, like, we signed him because he had this record buzzing, but then all of a sudden, how many got to a second record? Most, most, I mean, only one I could think about on top is like Lil Nas X. But then he went like here, here, here. He went everywhere, and he just understood how to control media and be relevant. But what I'm saying is that, dog, they don't they don't get to sign artists because they don't know what they're doing. They just really need you to inf- to influence their market share. I always tell artists when the label's trying to sign you, you got a buzz. Ask them what ask them what they're gonna give you that you can't give yourself. Mm, good point. That changes the whole conversation. Ask them what they're gonna do after the first record drop. I got the first record by the, momentum. By the way, not to cut you off. Now, by go the ahead. way, if I was in that seat, you wouldn't say that to somebody. You would not say to them, of course ask not. JD what he going to do that you do for mm-hmm. you that you can't do. That's what I'm not. saying. That's, that's why I say I they fear thing. me. Yeah. They fear, because I'm going to get in there and I'm going to show everybody in that company. How to do it. This person not working. He not working. She not working. All she doing is talking shit. Mm-hmm. I could do her job and his job mm-hmm. at the same time. You know what you got to do for now on? You know what you got to do for now on? <laughs> you got to walk in the room and say, has anybody ever overseen more than one album that sold 10 million copies? Raise your hand. Whoever sold more, whoever, who got more than two? But they don't care you, about that. Nah, but, they, but let me tell you why you got to do that. Because the position don't give you the power. The information gives you the power. Mm-hmm. The position is just somebody gave you the position so somebody could take it from you. Like whether Jermaine is at So So Def Columbia, Ari- you're Jermaine. Yeah, I don't give, I don't give a fuck who you're not room with. You're Jermaine. That's why it works. Unlike I'm the CEO of fucking this label. That's that's who you are. Nah, nigga. Like who are you without that? My thing. I said JD. I also get frustrated because I walk in the room when I worked at Epic. They be like Epic is in the building. I walked in the room when I worked at Interscope. Interscope's in the building. When I'm at Warner, Warner's in the building. I'm like nigga. It's still me. Mm. Yeah. Like why y'all like why y'all allowing the company name to dictate? Your power and your influence. If when when I left the com- last company I was with, I was like, "Man, put put a mic in front of me. I'm gonna talk." Because here's why: because I see you talking. I'm like, "Bro, why is he so quiet?" So I'm like, "I'm gonna talk." And I'm like, and now there are label people who are looking like, "Why are we not? Why are we not talking to him?" Well, he seems to know. Y'all don't know shit, and they don't know shit, and they are afraid of you coming in the room. Because if you come in the room, what do you think the artist gonna say? I want to work with him. Where, fuck, even, fuck, even, even though I want you to produce my shit, I want you to ruin my, my decisions being made. Is he going to be in the room while y'all deciding what's happening with my shit? Because 
y'all seem to be number button pushers. Is he going to be there? And for me, that's why I'm like, that's what they scared of you for. They scared that your, your influence of who you are is going to make the artist see that they don't do nothing besides sit in a powerful seat. And to me, that's what's wrong with the new music business. I always say, don't hire who makes you comfortable. Hire who's going to make you win. Because the yeah. nigga that make you comfortable, he might, you might like him, y'all might go out to dinners, y'all might hang out and do shit, but does he make you win? Does he help? I want to hire uncontrollable. I like uncontrollable. I want motherfuckers around me who I can't control. Because I'm like, those are motherfuckers that's going to find the shit that I didn't know was out there. Yeah, and, and, then if then I, and, and if I empower you, guess what I know you're going to do? You're going to bring it back to me. Yeah, it's, and it's not even about being uncontrollable. It's about, that's what the job is. The job is for, I, listen, I got in an argument one day with Lil John. Cause I was trying to protect Columbia and Lil John was like, JD, they don't give a fuck about da, 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 da. And he was going crazy. And this was about the social death base all stars. And Lil John fought. So he fought me so hard to go outside the box, mm -hmm. um, to go outside the box and start promoting this, my boo record with, you know, and he was like, they stuck on what's up, what's up. We go. I'm I'm sending out my boo tonight. And and at the, back then it was like, you know, if the label saying they working a record, let's not try to like distract them. <laughs> yeah. Let's let's let them Do work the record that yeah. they working. And Lil John was like, no, I'm sending out this record. This is the record I'm sending out. And I was like, you you getting ready to distract the promotion? It's like fuck the promotion. Did it? I'm just we, we having this conversation <laughs> at my office, and he said I'm sending the record out myself. And I was like, shit, all right, well, go ahead. Then tough guy, like, you know what I mean? Like, you, you should do it. And he sent the My Boo record out. And, you know, it became one of the biggest records ever. Um, and, and I'm saying that's the energy you've got to have at these record companies. How we going to these record companies now? They don't be having nobody playing no music. They, they in buildings where they can't actually play loud music. It's a record company. Right. You're saying an insurance company? <laughs> like it's a record company. What the fuck we doing? I always say nobody got in the music business to wake up at 9 in the morning and leave at 5 p.m. to go home to their family. Everybody wanted to be in the music business and something a little off with us. <laughs> we don't want no, something a little off. It's like, I want to go have a good ass time. I want to be at the parties. I want the shit that y'all do on Friday night to be my life every day. Yeah, and yeah. it's not that's what I'm saying it's so uninspired nobody's inspired no more they're just kind of like here's my job I'm like you ain't got an idea yeah I got an idea well, why you ain't saying it well this is how we figured that man don't let technology control us the music business has always been built on cool why the fuck are we letting people who call themselves nerds nerds tell us how to do our music well I have a question so you guys have been talking a lot about artist development or lack thereof so right now is there even such thing as developing artists? Because it seems like the artists are only coming to the labels halfway developed. I'm going to use an example. I'm going to jump in first because I'm going to use you as an example. I knew who Division was. I worked at Warner. I, I didn't know nothing about them. I knew they were signed to Drake. I knew I worked at Warner. I've learned more about Division to know that one guy's a singer, the other guy. I know more about Division only because of your Instagram. That's my point. That's artist development. It's like, now we have to do it in front of the camera. Mm. Now, rather when it was like, let's do it behind, let's get it perfect, then we present it to the world. Nah, we got to do that shit in real time. Like, I watched, I, you know, I'm, I, I study too. I watch you, the text Hove sent you, toxic. I couldn't wait to listen to it because I'm like, they keep leading up to this toxic fucking, I got to hear this shit. To me, that's artist development. That doesn't happen. If you don't do that, how the fuck do we know? Who they are. How would I know? Because I don't have no other way of knowing. JD, can you tell me a little bit about that? Because, of course, I have no idea what he's talking about. So he said JD, <laughs> I mean, JD. You don't know the text. Division? I know the vision. I know oh. the song that y'all referring to. But I want to know more about the rollout. And, like, was everything intentional? Did you sit down and make a plan for it? Or was it just, like, you saw opportunities on social media and you decided to just run with it? Nah, like, I, I was just listening to him talk about this. I don't, I don't actually subscribe to the word artist development. Because I don't go in there intentionally saying, hey, I'm going to give you yeah. this sweater. I'm gonna, yeah. If you come to my studio and you look whack, I'm going to give you this sweater. <laughs> if you come to my studio and you need some sneakers on, I'm going to take you to Lenox Square and we're going to get you some sneakers. You can't even be around me if you're... <laughs> just, it's not going to go down like that. Um, so that's just a natural thing that it's just in me to do that. You know what I mean? Like I'm saying, I'm talking about... 
if you just want to come hang around me, I'm giving you artist development. I guess that's what we call <laughs> but, 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 it. But that's you ain't what even an doing, artist. Though. It's just like, you just a homie. And I'm like, dog, you I, sure them lugs is what you should be wearing right now? Like, I call, listen, yeah, you know, we, know what I call it? I say that. artist development is, artist development is character development. Like, I think Usher was a totally different person on the first album than he was on the second album. Like, the first album, I can't say I knew he was. I knew he was, meaning, like, I knew Can You Get With It. You know what I'm saying? And I knew um all the time, the Think of You record, I knew that record. Mm-hmm. I ain't know Usher. Yeah. When Usher came with fucking You Make Me Wanna in that mode, and when you did that, to me it was like, damn, that's who he is. And I remember reading, you know, I was studying, I didn't even know I was going to be in the music business, but I remember seeing you saying, I was listening to his conversations. Like, that's artist development, though. Like, you really are allowing him to see himself in the ecosystem and how it works. Even if it's like, yo, don't take no sneakers, man. Let me get the right sneakers. Yo, that sweater. You really saying, yo, let me show you how to be, let me show you how to maximize who you are as a person, as a human being, even whether it's Lil John, whether it's Scooter, whether it's all these guys. You really have, dog, most of us are just looking for permission to be great. And usually that comes from somebody who we see is great. Somebody who we look up to that's like, yo, you can do this shit. Like, damn, like, damn if you told, like, Nigga, Tehran is one of the biggest writers in the world. Nigga, he called me like, nigga, JD called. Nigga, I'm on my way. He's only <laughs> been excited to work with two people that I knew. Oh my dog. You and Babyface. Like, he called me crying after the Babyface session. Like, nigga, I wrote a song with Babyface. When I was 12, my dad told me, one day you're going to be as good as Babyface, and I'm in the room with him. And no, nigga, I, nigga they, oh, Rock City only raps because of you. You don't know that? No. Hold on, let me give you the story. Timothy and Tehran, Rock City, our city, who I managed, who I made most of my success with, they were, they were the best dancers on the island, mm-hmm. in the Virgin Islands. They were the best dancers. And they, they were like backup dancers for every artist in the island. They would be like, yo, get the two little boys and let's get them behind us. And they do dance moves. And then they saw Criss Cross on TV. And they went to their dad and they said, we want to do that. Look, at we see people like us. And their dad was like, all right, fuck it. Y'all going to be rappers now. And then... He had people writing records for him, and the people were like, you know, they was, they, they was in the projects. They were sleeping on bachelors from the garbage can, and these guys were like, yo, you're going to have to pay me $50 to write for your sons. Like, fuck mm-hmm. that. And the dad was like, nah, y'all can write yourselves. You're going to be as good as Babyface. These kids are 12. They don't even, dog, if you've seen where they're from, you wouldn't know it, but they literally only That's are who story. they are because of Crisscross. That's dope. That's what, bro, I'm trying to tell you, like, you made shit. Seem impossible. You have you. Everybody got billboards now. You the first one with it. I don't know a motherfucker that had a billboard. By the way, mm-hmm. nobody, nobody in New York. Nobody ain't no New Yorkers had no. Oh, billboard. I have no clue. Oh, okay, I just make sure. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just saying, I'm just saying. <laughs> he had a billboard on, on, on Highway 85, like before BMF billboard. Actually, BMF they, they kind of clout chase because they put their billboard right behind yours. Yeah, yeah no. So I so mean, and Meech was going there. No, I'm just saying, but he. <laughs> that's what I'm saying, but like he put a billboard behind yours. So for me, I just feel like. You know, I don't think you, I think because you in it, what's Kanye mom said, a giant doesn't see a giant when they look in the mirror. They just see who they are. I feel like you don't realize the giant you are. I re- you really don't, bro. So even when you say, I don't say, I'm like, what are you talking about? You are the epitome of artist development. Yeah, I mean, I, I, I get it, but you got to understand, when, when I started, nobody, what it was nobody told me, Jermaine, this is artist development. I just was just trying, you know, and I, by, by the way, I started with shaving my eyebrows off. I started with <laughs> earring in my nose. I started with tattoos. It start, you start doing it to yourself, to every, you know. Le- me and left eye start cutting sh- things up and cutting clothes up and this, that, and the third. So it all just comes from, like, you just sitting. By, and it also is a product of being from Atlanta. You, if you've been being from Atlanta and you can't nobody's giving you an opportunity. So everything that, that, that I got, I'm trying to make to sure you see out. me. Yeah. I'm trying to make sure you paying attention to me. So I'm trying to do something more than the music. I'm trying to say, okay, what if the music is just 50% good? We got to have something else to make sure people paying attention to us. So it's like, girls, y'all got to do this. and Guys, y'all got to do this. and We need a little bit more. JD, the, the music jamming. Yeah, but we from Atlanta. They don't fuck with us off top, off the rip. They don't fuck with us. So we already coming into the game down 50. Mm-hmm. We got to get them 50 back. So it's like the struggle of just fighting with people and trying to get in is that's, that's where the, the artist development side comes from for me. This, 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 first of all, I can't, 
Okay, so I'll fuck with Puff, but I can't wait till you smoke him. No real talk. On a versus. <laughs> no, I'm saying, because you know, we from the South. Like, we don't have enough people yelling for us. I c- Y'all run the music industry nah, right now. Nah, but we still, but if we did, we would have more buildings here. We still got to go to New York and L.A. to get our checks cut. Let's Whose be clear. fault is that? It's just the way the game is set up. It's just I'm just, my, my point is this, is that I think it's our fault. I'll take, it's our fault. But my thing is this, is that I don't think you realize, like, everybody in this room, it's like 20 people in here had have been raised by your music, bro. Mm-hmm. Like, do you ever think about that shit? Like, mm-hmm. I raise niggas. Like, <laughs> no. you don't I ever think, think about I, that I, shit? I think, I think, you know what I think? I think the, 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 the not popping shit and, the, and me not thinking about that comes from the youth. Because the one thing that I, the one thing that I will pop shit about yeah. is that I put young niggas in the music industry. Nobody else. I'm the reason why young exist in rap music today. I'm the reason why little niggas call themselves little. It was nobody out before Little Bow Wow. I want to slap the fucking table, but I'm nobody. Be calm. There's no little nobody. There's nobody. If you got little in front of your name and you claim you didn't get that from Bow Wow, you're lying. Or somebody gave it to you because it was nobody out. 106 and Park was created by me. Nobody else. I created the show for Bow Wow. Let me hear about this. I'm, I'm <laughs> not, no, no. Because listen, 106 and Park is around the corner from my house. I used to go there after school. I want to hear about this. Because Bow Wow was Mr. 106 and Park, but I thought that was just because he was on the show all the time. So you, when you, you say. You thought because he was on the show, what was the last part you said? All the time. All like, the time. All you the hear time. that? All, listen, what I was a Bow Wow What would make him be on fan. the show all the time? If he the had person, the game on Smash. Because the person who created the show was the person who produced it Bow Wow. So when you produced Bow Wow. So when you thought of what what was your thought process in creating 106 and Park then? Like what well, was I, kept, I was watching MTV mm-hmm. and MTV had TRL mm-hmm. and they was catering to NSYNC and they was catering to Backstreet Boys mm-hmm. and anything white that was coming out that was pop. They was allowing these kids and and the kids of the world to scream and holler at them. And I'm like, yo, we we don't have nothing for black people like this. Where's the black kids that that love music, why don't they have a show like this? Who you called up? Huh? Who did you call up? Who'd you got on get on the phone with? And Stephen say? Hill. So I called Stephen Hill and I say, yo, um, we I need to make a show. I got I got an artist. We need to make a show just like 106. I mean, just like uh, TRL. And he said, What's the artist? And I said, his name is Bow Wow. And um, of course he was like, I don't know. You know, everybody challenges what I'm saying. Yeah. If you go back and look at the first Bow Wow r- rollout, Beware Dog, we started doing these, we started doing these um, performances at malls. Yes, Macy's. And, I remember when I was little. And we was, yeah, we got shut down. Kids was running crazy. Pandemonium. They were shutting the malls <laughs> down. 2,000, 3,000 kids coming to the mall. I start seeing this and I'm saying, listen, this is the same thing that you guys are promoting at TRL. Mm. Mind you, they wasn't gonna put Bow Wow on TRL like that because he was a rapper. Mm-hmm. Mm. He was he wasn't he wasn't he, he was wasn't he was he was a no, no. black little young boy rapping, but he also was twelve years old. Nobody on TV was twelve years old anywhere creating this type of fandomonium, right? So I went to Stephen Hill and I'm like, yo, we need this show. We need this show. We need a show on BET that shows black artists like this. By the way, just so everybody out there that tries to challenge this, there was no Chris Brown before Bow Wow. There was no Lil Romeo. There was no Omarion. There was no B2K. There was no uh, whatever these little niggas' names is. There was none. All of them came after Bow Wow. Yes. If you watch 106 and Park, you know you from Harlem. You know, none of them artists was out before Bow Wow. I'm trying to think of the posters. She that cried to Bow Wow. She cried. She got her first kiss to Bow Wow. Don't shout her front Mario. Now. She got her first kiss like to Bow Wow. Nelly, Jagged Egg Hedge, Bow Wow were like my first posters from working. By the way, all movies. of them artists is older. We talking about the 12 yeah, no, years. I'm, saying. I'm just so saying from a 12 year old standpoint, it was nobody 12, 13, 14, 15, 16 years old on TV. Prior, I did it with Criss Cross. 10 years before mm-hmm. Bow Wow, I did it with Criss Cross. I'm talking about once Bow Wow came out. I mean, before Bow Wow came out, it was nobody Shame in that man. space. 
There was nobody in the middle space. And that's another thing that I, I feel like that's the thing. Like, people, you know, hip-hop ain't that old, right? So it's not, it's, we act like hip-hop is 100 years old. It's not an old thing. It's very, very young. It's niggas out here who got songs that's older than the whole genre that we around here act like we killing people and fighting for and all of this. Osley Brothers got songs older than hip-hop, period, right? So it's not an old thing. So we, we, you know, we in a genre where people don't like to say you the first. Mm. That's what it is. We don't, but, but they should understand that because it's, it's too young for you not to say who's the first. Mm. Like me, like, you know, when Soulja Boy starts saying he was the first, did it, like people laugh at him. There was no Soulja Boy before Bow Wow too, by the way. Let's say that. Yeah, there's no Soulja Boy exactly. before Bow Wow. But, you know. For him to say that, people laugh like, oh, that's funny. But it's a, it's a true space for him to be in because hip-hop is not old. Yeah. You know, just like Atlanta. Atlanta having money and looking fly and being traffic outside the way it is right now and all of this, it wasn't like this. I'm the first nigga in Atlanta to have a G-Wagon. I want to slap the table, I'm sorry. <laughs> the first person. When I ordered my G-Wagon, I had to truck. order it. It wasn't even on the lot at the Mercedes-Benz dealership. They didn't even have them shits in the city. First person I ever saw, the first person I ever saw from my city was a Bentley. Remember, you had the two-door Bentley. Yeah. I, that was the first time I ever saw Bentley in my life was your two-door. So, I'm saying, so it's just, a, it's just a thing about people not understanding that it's okay to have a, to say you the first. You know, just like, just like the story of Atlanta. I see people all the time post this and be like, who was the first group? to set Atlanta on fire. And it's an argument, but right? Because there's people in the streets that want to say outcast. But we, we, we got to keep it 100. Criss Cross sold 8 million records. They yes. first album. This is before LaFace. <laughs> no, I want to I'm, I'm not this, even this, let him talk. This is about what you talk more. This is before, this, you talk this, more. This, I'm like, this is before LaFace even came to Atlanta. This is, this is, this, you know, that's what Babyface said to me. He said, oh, you got that little song, Jump. Chris Cross was out. I was out here doing what I was doing and when I seen ba Babyface. And I was renting his studio. I was giving them money. At the same, you know what I'm like, you know what I mean? They came here and gave niggas money. I was giving them my money. I'm renting their studio. By the way, every NBA game right now, when there's a jump ball, they play Chris Cross <laughs> jump <laughs> to do. this day. Wait, but is it because, like, I don't know, was Chris Cross really promoting Atlanta the way Outkast was? Because, like, you knew Atlanta no, was from. Wait, I mean, wait, Outkast wait, wait, was from Atlanta. That's what I'm saying. You're talking about the biggest group. One of the biggest groups in the world. At that time. I remember at, at that time. I took these guys from Greenbrier Mall to open up for Michael Jackson. Oh, that's crazy. Who else from Atlanta opened up for Michael Jackson? How long we got? We can wait. No, nah, no, stop. No, no, keep, talking, keep talking. Keep talking. Keep talking. Hey, sure. hey keep saying. talking. Yeah. That's the whole point. Chris Cross went from Greenbrier Mall. They, I met they didn't them even at, know they was artists. I met them at Greenbrier Mall. Next thing you know, they was opening for Michael Jackson for the dangerous world tour in Europe. In Europe? That's crazy. There's nobody. Nope. Listen. I'm, and, and by the way, I'm saying I, I feel like, <laughs> like I said, hip hop at the time, before people opened the doors and, and opened it for youth um, and started saying it's for youthful thing, it wasn't a youthful thing. Nope. So, so Criss Cross, again, was something that wasn't supposed to happen. By the way, they're produced by somebody that was 19. So none of us are 21 years old. None, none of us are even 20. <laughs> none of us are 20. I'm not even 21 when Criss Cross comes out. Criss Cross yeah. came out, I was 19. Mind blown. And they are 11 and 12. So everybody's teenagers. <laughs> everybody's teenagers. Everybody's kids. That's everybody's crazy. kids. And nobody, and nobody in the music industry had ever seen this before. That's what I'm saying. So therefore, if you've never seen it before, they don't give you the credit for being... They just take that like, oh, this was a almost like a... Ex this wasn't real. You know what I mean? <laughs> I just can't imagine somebody coming in with some 11 and 12 year olds and being like... But you was a kid, hey, bro. Yeah, no, no, I was 17 when I... I was actually 17 when I... Saying, hey, they're gonna but be nah, the next fuck star. all that. Fuck all that. The man is... He's like Spike Lee of this music <laughs> shit. Not for real. <laughs> you found the act. You gotta remember, Criss Cross went to... I think they went to Bear Creek Middle School. I went to McNair. We, like, dog. The I own, When I came to Atlanta, Shannon Mall was where we went. Mm -hmm. I only wanted to go to Greenbrier Mall as a kid because that's what Criss Cross got discovered. <laughs> I'm for like dog. They had the city 
fucked up. That was a phenomenon. And I didn't even think you weren't even 21. Yeah, no. Man, you too motherfucking humble, I'm man. Wrong. Yeah. So I'm not, I'm say, if you, you everywhere you walk, you should have a goat with you, bro. Like, <laughs> no bullshit. They should be like, yo, no, they, no, no, no. They should be like, yo, Jermaine's outside the club. Jermaine's outside. He said, where's the section at? But where's the, where's the place for the goat? Right. The nah, goat follows nah, him. Nah, listen, you know, you know, like I said, in, in all of success, it's all such a struggle. You know what I mean? Like, it was a fight to get people to understand <laughs> Criss Cross. It was a fight to get people to even listen to me, right? When I did Criss Cross... I put Criss Cross on Rough House, right? And and they not even on they not even on So So Def. They wasn't even on So So Def. They was on a different label because I was so like I just wanted to get it done. I wanted them to come out. So I didn't have the idea that I could even be a label owner. Mm-hmm. I had by the way, TLC is my group prior before LaFace. Mm-hmm. TLC was my group before they went to LaFace. I had TLC and Criss Cross at the same time, but I just didn't have the bandwidth to like. Hey, I'm gonna work y'all, and I'm gonna work y'all, and I'm gonna work. I I eventually got that bandwidth, but I didn't have it at the same at that Mind time. Mind you, if he was in New York doing that, he would have had all the support. Mm. No, I'm being honest with you, for real. Like, like you know, like even when Bad Boy launched, he launched the Big Mac at the same time. Atlanta, you got to go one by one because you don't have somebody who's looking at you like, go run your shit, go support your shit. I just I was in a staff meeting yesterday with a whole company, and I said we need money in Atlanta. Uh, I said. Name a label in Atlanta that wasn't cutting checks, that can cut a check from that office that didn't run a music business. I, duh, as soon as QC got funding, they became a number one rap label. As soon as LaFace came down, he was cutting checks. Duh, you talk about. But see, that's what I'm saying. So you make that conversation, that's, that's what you leave out so so dead. No, but no, no, I'm about to get to I'm saying so 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 dead, but I didn't but Jack, Don't I leave didn't out know. So, so I did now. not know. Because you got to remember, he wore more than one hat. But I'm so saying, like, we, organized we, we like, saw you as a, you, you was, you, we saw you as the writer, producer. We knew you wrote all crisscross shit. We knew you was writing everything else, but you, we didn't even know that there was a business behind it. Cause we knew a Face was here because LA and Face was wearing suits to the office every day. It was like, shit, yeah. those are the label guys. You but see, come. that's what I'm saying. So listen to that. <laughs> exactly. That's what I'm saying. So you didn't know I was doing it because I wasn't wearing suits. That's what exactly. I'm saying. That's the same thing I'm saying. It's like people who aren't paying, they don't pay attention to what I do because. I'm, you know. Young. By the way, niggas be on in Instagram and they be like, JD, you old, OG, da da da. I, everybody that y'all like is older than me. Mm-hmm. Everyone that y'all, every That's nigga me. that y'all I like. Love it. Puff, Jay Z, Dame Dash, whoever, they, they older than they older than me. Y'all niggas don't realize it. They are older than me. <laughs> they are older than me. But I have a question. So there were plenty of times you had a chance to sign artists and you passed on them and they went on to be successful. Um, did passing on these artists ever make you question yourself or have beef with like your team? And how did you overcome that? Um, only one, Who? only one. Ludacris, Cri- uh, Ludacris. Annika High School, only College one. Park. Um, and and only only <laughs> on, you know why the Ludacris one? Because my hunch was yes, mm-hmm. right? And yeah. it was the first time I never went with my hunch, and I tried to be a businessman. Yeah. Yeah. Right. I yeah. tried to allow my because it was a, so many. I have so many. Like you see all these people in. Yeah. I used to come to my office and be people walking around the office like this, and I'd be like, "JD, you gotta let some of these people work. Mm-hmm. You know, they here for a reason." But I go on my staff meetings. I don't give a fuck what you saying. If I don't fuck with what you talking about, I'm going what my gut is telling me. Exactly. And you could be, I could have hired you and be paying you the highest dollar. And you and I'm like, nah, uh, I'm going to block your punt right now. <laughs> yeah, it's not going down. No, nope, no, it's not happening. So, so I, Ludacris, I put Ludacris on Madden, by the right? first, the first Madden record, the first Madden game that ever had yeah. music. I, I did it and I put Ludacris on him. How did that opportunity come about? Did, they, did Madden come to you? Did you? Yeah, Madden came to me. Okay. Um, you know, anything young around this period, based you on crisscross, I became the young guy. Like, let the, the young boy it, yeah. do it. Let the, he's, 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 so anything that had anything to do with games that was like catering to kids. So I'm guessing that's how it came. So Madden called, and I didn't even want to put myself rapping on it. I was like, I, I got this guy. Ludacris is not signing me. I don't manage him. I don't do nothing. I went to Ludacris at the radio station. I said, yo, I fuck with the drops that you've been doing on the radio. I like the way your voice sounds. And they said I needed something animated and a, a, like crazy sounding for this intro. I put Ludacris on Madden. 
right? The first Madden music. And when I put him on there, I should have just said, you know what, I'm going to sign you. Yeah. And I should have been like, uh, what's, the, what's one of these... Gene Griffin. I should have been Gene Griffin <laughs> and, and made a deal where, like, yo, if I put you on this Madden, yeah, you're you signed to me for 200 exactly. years. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> but I ain't that guy, right? So, but what I'm saying, that's what somebody else would have done. And that's the only reason, because I, my hunch, before I asked my office, I had already did the Madden, so I, should, I ain't need to ask them. Yeah. But I went in there and I asked them, I said, yo, y'all think I should sign Ludacris? And everybody in the room was like, no. So then I'm like, damn. But but you know what? Today, defense, he was Chris Lover Lover on the radio. I understand, but it's like that's like if y'all, that's like a, that, the, no no. And I only say that because the first time that I because I went to high school with Chris, first time that I knew Chris was like we thought Chris was rich was Madden. Like that was like the talk. Like this is a little Chris on Madden right now. Like he rich as fuck. So I didn't even know that you did. I didn't even know that. I was like that was our, that was the first time we took him serious as a rapper. Cause we he was Chris Love Love and Poon Daddy like it was like a group to us. It was like yeah, but see that's what I'm saying. They a group. I was listening to him like this nigga's nice. Yeah, he's hard. He's animated. This is what I need. Yeah, right. But how do you push past that? Because it's like okay, I knew I should have went with my gut. My I tried to trust my damn team. I tried to be this um, boss and let them do their job, and they they failed at this. How do you push past that? Like, do you still keep the same team? Does somebody get fired? Like. No, nah, you just look at everybody with a side eye. <laughs> like, don't, no, hold on, let's be clear, though. Don't forget, he didn't need it. Mm. It wasn't like, it's kind of like, see, sometimes we be giving people a hard time, but, like, he was still who he was. It was like, that was kind of like, you know, that's like some, that's some low-hanging fruit that I could have picked up and turned into a whole right. tree. But didn't make a break. It wasn't like he was a struggling label, <laughs> struggling producer. It was like, yeah, nah, we really need to win. Like, everybody that's on his team, they were hotter than Chris. Yeah, I mean, Chris was they, a brand new artist, and it was like, yeah. you know, he was trying to get signed, um, and, you know, yeah, he, he actually, Chris was actually going around telling people he was the actual Afro man of So So Dev, because he had Afro and all of this, yes. that was his thing, um, but yeah, I mean, you know, he know, Chris know my love for him, is, is you know, it just happened to be me trying to be, and that's what I'm saying, like, once again, it goes back to me saying, I'm 19, 20, 21, 22 years old, 23. I'm learning. I'm learning, and I'm teaching myself. I don't have nobody beside me saying, J.D., nah, nah, do, 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 do. I got, I'm watching Russell Simmons. I'm watching Clive Davis. I'm watching old shit and on Barry grown Gordon. they ass men. Yeah, I'm watching all kid. these. Yeah, I'm watching all these guys. And everything that Russell was doing, I'm like, I want to do that in Atlanta. I want to bring you know, jobs to Atlanta. I want people to work for me. I want all of that, you know? And that's the part that I hate the most that I feel like people leave out of my story is that I really was doing that. Now, we know. I think we know. I just think that, I just think because of your personality and because you do it all, I think sometimes you didn't, like, even me listening to you, I'm like, like, I know, like, I'm like, this nigga wrote 7 o'clock on the dot of <laughs> in my drop top. Like, niggas know what it is, but it's like, yo, like, bro, like, dog, you really... Fuck nah, it. But it took a it took a long time for people to say that. Like when I went into the Songwriters Hall of Fame, it was people online. Like, how y'all gonna nominate JD and you were one of after the Hove? Songwriters to be inducted. Huh? You were one of the youngest songwriters to be inducted into the songwriter. Probably. Hall of Fame. Yeah. yeah so. But I mean, you know, like when I went in there for the award, I realized that night, like, this is an institution that's been around for 40 some years, 40 plus years. And over 40 years of writers, it's never been a writer in there that's like me. That's why I said it's like, it's not a bunch of twos. It, nowadays it is, but I'm saying prior to me coming out, you got to think, Babyface ain't, I don't think Babyface has one number one rap song. I don't mm -hmm. think Jimmy Jam and Terry Lewis have a number one rap song. Quincy Jones definitely don't have no number one rap song. Um, um, Whoever, I mean... Nardo Michael Walden. I mean, I don't know. Whoever whoever these, you know, producers are that we all call. I know they're the, they yeah. the goats to yeah. me, right? Yeah. But even Barry Gordy being as the great Barry Gordy, he's a songwriter. Yeah. Songs only. Yes. Right? Jermaine Dupri came, and his first song was the number one rap record. His second song was the number one R&B record. His third song was the number one rap record. It's like... 
I I was doing I'm doing all of this and no, nobody no, else no, is doing no, no. no nobody else is writing full songs. I'm not 10%. I'm not 5%. I'm not getting 15%. I'm writing 100% of these songs and nobody's paying no attention to it. Like it's like nobody actually understands that. Like even like the story with Nice and Slow, right? My mind was to bring Jagged Edge in to help me finish the song. Yeah. The song was done already. Yeah. They came in and the part that they actually did, um, yeah, the world, all of, all of young rappers and everybody, they want to steal that. I don't you know, I, I fuck you right, I will. I fuck you. That's Jagged Edge. Yeah. The whole song prior to that was done, right? Mm. So, so you have people online that's like, Jagged Edge wrote Nice and Slow. And me, I'm not going to go on. crazy. No, I'm not going to go because it's my group. I'm not getting yeah. ready to be like, no, nah, fuck, they didn't yeah, write yeah, the yeah. song. That's my group. You want them to win. I'm not trying to diss them. Yeah. We did this together. Yeah. But I'm saying I wrote the song. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's yeah. just what it is. But how, how do, like, <laughs> most writers have a niche. Like, you just said something, like, most writers, like, Babyface, we know a Babyface song, mm. right? I don't think there's a Babyface song that I heard that I was like, I don't sound like Face wrote that, like. No, like you really went from like Miggity 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 Mac mm -hmm. Daddy to like fucking escape, just kick it to fucking Usher to like how the fuck do you tap into that many? Like, where does that come from? God. No, I mean like, but but like I'm saying, like what like what were you did you feel boundaries? Cause that, that's what I'm asking. Like, like I think if anybody was afraid to attempt. They can pull it off if they're afraid. But it takes audaciousness to do, like, to say, I could do that. I could do, like, motherfuckers ain't jack of all trades. Like, bro, like, I'm really listening. I'm like, dog, like, you wrote, and you did. Now I'm being a kid. Make it, make it. I got a video of me fucking rapping. Like, dog, we, like, how the fuck? I need that inserted. Yeah, in the yeah I, I don't, I, mean, <laughs> I, 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 it's a lot of, but it's a lot of, you know, mistakes to get you to that space, right? Um, it's a lot of, like, non-stop practice and non-stop in the studio every day to to get you to a space where you just, like, you know, like, even, like, my album, Life in 1472, I didn't, I didn't want to rap, but I, I used to make raps just for me to listen to in my car. Mm. Like, if I make a beat, and I, and say for instance, I make a beat, and I thinking that the beat is for somebody. Mm -hmm. But then the beat makes me start saying some crazy shit like all I like is these jazzy hoes, mm -hmm. right? My, my, off top, I'm like, this person that I'm writing this song for, they're not going to say jazzy hoes. Because jazzy hoes is some that's, Atlanta shit. Yeah, that's, that's, what Atlanta not, say, yeah. that's not what they're getting ready <laughs> yeah. to say. So I can't give them this. But this is the idea that's beating me in my head. So I'm going to just go in the booth real quick, and I'm going to say this, and I'm going to put it down as if it was my song. Right, so I start doing that like every other day. I have different ideas. Like I, I took, um, um, the the shook ones from from um, from Mob Deep, and I made official college park college park murderers. Yeah. Right. And I would take, and I take, I just take people's beats, and I make a whole song over, right? And I'd be riding around listening to it, and, and all like, like my own mixtape, right? Yeah. And then my friends would get in the car, and they like, "Yo, what the fuck is this?" And I'm like, "It's just some shit I just listened to. I'm just, I was just fucking around." And they was like, "You should make that a song." So then Jazzy Hoes was just a play record, and it was like, they was like, "See, if you put some niggas on that song, that song go." So then I start like, start listening to them say this, like, yeah. "Oh, you do this to do this." So then I'm like. Oh, y'all niggas like me rapping? All right, fuck it, I'm gonna rap. Exactly. But it was never like, you know, like I said, it's just a, it's just a play thing. So in, if you if you have the bandwidth to play with music, you'll start realizing, oh, okay, these guys that's writing these singing songs, they're not really doing too much. Yeah. Too much. You know, yeah. Babyface, yeah. listen. Incredible. <laughs> don't, don't, let's, let's, let's make sure yeah, exactly. don't let's make sure yeah. y'all don't get fucked up what I'm saying. Yeah. What they doing is amazing. But if you if you're in there every day and you're working, you can realize that you could try to come up with something that can compete with these people. You know, like mm. to run, like you said yeah. about to run. It's like it's it's all you got to do is stay in there every day. Like that that story that you yeah. just told about them and somebody telling them they had to write pay fifty dollars to write, and then they was just like forced to learn. Yeah, that's basically what I was. I was forced to learn. I was also this is another thing I was telling uh, Brian the other day because I'm not the other day, but. 
like not too long ago, is that I was too young to know people, mm. right? You know, you, you got to think, like, when people come to Atlanta, like you say, you came to Atlanta, right? And you moved around and you seen things and you went Fairville. You was yeah. like, oh, that's where JD lived. I was too young to move around. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I was yeah. I wasn't I wasn't even, I was I was making records before I had a license. So I wasn't even like I didn't even I couldn't even drive. That's crazy. I was trying to like I didn't know engineers, yeah. so I had to learn how to engineer myself. Yeah. I, I didn't have nobody I could call and be like, hey, can you send somebody over to the studio to work? Who was I gonna call? The only yeah. person I knew was Dallas. Right, so I would. Dallas is from College Park, so me and Dallas is the only. I knew. I'm just trying to say something. I'm just trying to say. You know what I'm saying? So I, I only person I knew like that Dallas I could Park like letter. depend on was Dallas, and even then, I still I didn't have no money. I was young. I'm, I'm young. I'm broke, and I don't know people. Right, so only thing I could do was just like start my own community of people that I meet, and then. Um, Everywhere it was a gap, I had to learn how to do. And that's that's also probably why the dressing. We couldn't afford no stylist. We couldn't afford no. <laughs> so I, so exact, I'm, I'm, I'm actually, yeah, I'm actually, I'm trying to fill all these voids because we got to get it done. I, I got a question for you, man. I just got to ask you this. By the way, this is something that he probably would have checked me for because I. this is what I thought as a kid. <laughs> now, mind you, if this ain't true, but how the fuck did you and Dallas get along when you made crisscross, who basically took down ABC, because if I'm not mistaken, they had a line in their shit where they was like, because when they said, because Inside Out, ABC was when they closed Inside Out, so that's why it was like, because Inside Out is wiggity 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 whack. So I'm like, how it was the fuck? A it was a sub. ABC was when they closed Inside Out, as far as I remember, and I remember when crisscross made. And I mean, like, it just dawned on me. I was like, how the fuck were they friends? Because you basically ended. No, I didn't end it. They were still popping. <laughs> no, 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 no. Listen, you're not, like, you're not like when Cash Money came. You fucked with No Limit, but it was like, we got another New over. Orleans option. Yeah. When you a kid, I, I got videos of me dance to Aisha. Like, in the projects. Like, straight the fuck up. Me and PDK. It's a video of us dancing to Aisha. <laughs> ABC was the shit. Mm -hmm. They was they from College Park, Gabby Road, yeah. they Old Town Villa. Yeah. Real talk. And then you come down and then here come Criss Cross. Well, like everything is to the back. So they everything to the back was kind of like the answer to ABC's Inside Out. Mm. And they said it, it's wiggity, 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 whack. So at that point, Inside Out was done. Like it was like, it's only, it's only, it's like when Jay-Z said that the death of auto-tune, it was over for T-Pain. It was like, how, but T-Pain still holds on to that shit. Yeah. Like how the fuck did you literally hurt a, you, shout out to Chris Rowe. I went to high school with them too. The my niggas. That was I went to high, high school having a boy. College Park. Okay. I went to high school with Chris and Rowe, but I'm saying, you ended that shit. How the fuck was, how was that when you were in Dallas back then? Like, how the fuck was that? I mean, you know, it was, it was, I mean, we was, we was, people wanted to make us rivals, but we, we, we homeboys. We from the same neighborhood and it's music. Ultimately, um, my, my reason behind that is this, this, I wanted people to understand that Criss Cross was a rap group that, that, and, and, and I taught them how to be rappers, not, not, um, rappers that want to sing, not singers that want to rap. I taught them how to be rappers. I taught them the mentality of a rapper. I taught them to, they, they mentality was just like, when Criss Cross came out and, and they was actually really a rap group, they was really a rap group. They was with all the rap shit. They was with all the rap beef. They was with rap, all the rap bullshit. Mm -hmm. They was just a rap group. So, and, 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 you know, they was so they was little, so everybody was always like, "Are they like ABC?" No, they not like ABC. Were you yourself at this time a rapper? Because how do you teach somebody to be a rapper if you aren't a rapper? Um, well, it was just <laughs> it's it's this trick that that Jay Z and Biggie them have that people hear about that they be like, "Yo, they go in the studio and they don't write their raps. It's crazy. How do they memorize their raps?" And I, I never realized that I was actually doing this. Like, I never realized that, that, by the way, everybody in here does this. It's a song that each one of you people in this room know that you've never seen the lyrics before in your life. You know every word of the song. Yeah. Now, have, however you know it, you know every word of it. You've never even seen the lyric sheet one time. That's crazy. But you know every word of the song, right? So if you take that theory of how do you know music 
without you seeing the lyrics. How do I know these words? How am I in the shower singing this song and I never seen, I never, well, I, now, nobody's seen the lyrics, yeah, right? Yeah. So I'm in my car one day with Chris and Chris and we listened to Ice Cube and the America's Most Wanted was like the hottest record at that time. And they was in the backseat and I'm watching them sing all the lyrics. I heard payback, they cursing and all that. They sang all the Ice Cube shit. And I'm watching them in the screen and I'm like, how do y'all know these lyrics like that? And why y'all, and they, they, they got all the hand signals and all this to the songs that ain't even theirs. So I'm like, man, if I write them a song and they act the same way with this song that they acting with Ice Cube, they gonna be superstars. Mm -hmm. So I had to figure out how to write a song that was good enough <laughs> to get them to do that. <laughs> so I started writing songs and I and they and I put the song on. They ain't had that reaction. I'm like, damn, this song sucks. <laughs> like, this is, my, my song sucks. I gotta, get, <laughs> I, gotta get, I gotta get a better song. I gotta write a better song because it's not. This is by the way, this is the definition of hitting an algorithm. Yeah. I'm trying to find their algorithm in writing songs. Mm -hmm. I'm writing another song. Boom. Yeah. They 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 trying to do it, but it ain't they not learning it like like this. Another song. Yeah, they not learning it like this. So I write, so I'm like, I'm watching them. I'm watching everything that's going on. And I write Little Boys in the Hood, right? And that tapped into where their mind was. Their mind was, they are little boys in the hood. This is us. Yeah. We are these yeah. little boys in the hood. Yeah. We know what's going on. You know what yeah. I mean? The little boy that's in, in Boys in the Hood, when he said, y'all want to see a dead body? That was crisscross. They, they was in the streets. They was out They was out there. <laughs> yes. You know what I mean? Yes. They was telling me everything that was going on from a little kid's standpoint at, in their neighborhood. You know what I mean? All through the whole West Side, wherever they, whatever they, I picked them up, they'd be telling me stories. So I started writing a song about little boys in the hood and how the world doesn't actually even consider these people as real people. Mm. Because if you're 12 wow. and 13, you don't actually even exist in this world. Mm. You can't go to no clubs. You can't actually buy anything. You actually, you, People don't actually believe that you have the mind to see what you see. They was telling me stuff, so I wrote it, and they were so excited about the song. They learned the song in like 30 minutes. I'm like, wow, this is pretty crazy. Now, mind you, this before I met Jay-Z, or work with Biggie, or ever heard anybody say this. I'm watching this example of these guys not see no lyrics. I ain't give them no paper. I'm just playing the song. They learned the song in the air. Oh, wow. Next thing you know, they they know the song. They learning the song. They learning the song. So then we record the song. They start just, boom, this is it. I'm like, this is going to be their first song. Little Boys in the Hood. I remember that record, too. Crazy. I sent the song to Rough House. It was like, yo, we love them. We want to do a deal. But the energy of Rough House wasn't crazy, crazy to me. It was cool. Like, they wanted to do the deal. We got to deal with it. But it wasn't, like, over the top. Mm -hmm. And this experiment that I'm talking about, this was the first record that the experiment worked. So I'm like, I didn't nail it. I got close to it. Mm -hmm. I could get better. I could write a better song, right? So it's like, we got the deal. They tell us they want us to come to Philly to record the, the, the we're supposed to be an EP or whatever. We come to Philly, we're going to record, and we're going to record the rest of the album when we get to Philly, or whatever it was. Um, two nights before we was getting ready to get on a plane, I wrote Jump in like 30 minutes. What inspired you to write Jump? Like, what, what, what was the inspiration behind it? Like, how'd you come up with that? Um, well, I mean, every concert at that time, people would come on the stage and they was just jumping. You know what mm. I mean? That was the thing. It wasn't like they weren't telling people to jump. It was just like... You know, yeah. um, what's that song? Um, engine, engine, number nine. nine. Um, I'm on this that. Exact line. Line. Black sheep. If my train falls off the track, pick, pick it up, pick it up, pick it up. Pick it, up. Pick it, up. it doesn't say jump. It says pick it up, pick it up, pick it up. But in everybody video, jumps. Everybody's jumping. Back and I'm like, I'm train. like, jump. Right. This is what people is doing. If we tell them to do it, they go. They already doing it with it. They they just let's tell them to do it. If you look at that video, that's exactly what the song was. That. Like that, I'm watching that. I'm like, oh, we need a, we need something. So, I, so I just start trying to write a song. I didn't know what, if it was gonna work or not, but I'm just trying to write. I'm worried more about me writing better yes. lyrics than Boys in the Hood. I don't care about the yes. actual song. I'm thinking more or less like, 
I I'm I feel like I'm getting better. Yeah. I'm writing a better I could write a better song. I could I could try to make them do things, right? Yeah. Even like the Miggity 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 Mac part was just me saying, let me see if these boys really can, can get down with this. <laughs> right? It's not, you know, it ain't hard, but it's like if you don't rap and somebody throw a lyric at you and Miggity Miggity Miggity, miggity back and you like that ain't what you do, you ain't really gonna nail it, right? I gave them this song, same thing. Boom. I don't know. I don't even remember them ever, ever seeing the paper. They learned all the lyrics by listening. And that, I just, I, it's crazy because, like I said, once I met Jay and I seen him do it and Biggie and I seen people react to it, I'm like, man, I've been doing this shit for 10 years already. Like, that's crazy. I already been, we've been memorizing <laughs> lyrics because all it is, if, if, so if how you, would you lay it down? Memorize it. I mean, I would, I would write it. I would write oh, it. I was, I was oh, writing. Okay, gotcha. I would write. I would write it. But I'm saying the same thing with memorizing. Yeah. I, if I, that, you know, that's that's how I became a better writer yeah. because I realized that if I write something and I go to sleep and I don't put it down and I wake back up and I still know the melody, that's it. then it's it. That's, that's it. it. Right. And that's that's how I became. So I start. And, and I'm saying that's all memory. That's mm. all my memory. It's not anything, you know, it's just all my memory. Yeah, it's like it's like being in game shape. So I, I got man. <laughs> I don't know. So I just wanna let you I just wanna let you talk. I ain't gonna lie, but I got is there me being in the music business, is I understand this part. Is there a song or something that you made that you thought was going to go that didn't go? And is there something that you made that you was like this cool but it went crazy well i won't say it's something that i thought was cool but i mean it was something i didn't expect to go yes yeah, i'm saying I'm like something you yeah, like y'all yeah, like that uh, yeah um um because i ain't gonna lie one day we was in the club one night and we was at army wednesday shout out to keith and b cox they got the hottest club in the city I should, we should get a section for that shout out, but we'll talk about that later. Tonight. But yeah, tonight, exactly, tonight. But no, but we was in uh, R&B Wednesday, and Mixmaster David played, uh, and I was just like, and I'm looking at you, and you just kind of, I mean, you just nonchalant about shit. Like, oh, <laughs> and I'm like, hey, man, the whole club, you know, dropped the beat. I'm like, nigga, did you know that that was going to be that? Like, nah, nah, you don't, you don't, never like, know. you don't never know. I, like, I'm saying we belong together. I'm going to say is that song oh, yes. um, that you that we belong together is the song that you didn't realize mm -hmm. was going to be song of the decade. Oh, you don't you don't forecast. That. I ain't going to lie because because if I, on that album that uh I came to have a party. That record to me was a better record because you got to remember we we fucked Mariah, but she was so gone so long. And it was like came she came back with the fucking sauce. Like it was like, nigga, and I'm never like even that whole statement. If you saying that she came back with a song, I don't even know what that is. I'm, 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 like, I'm, I'm, say, I'm saying that she was known no, no, as no, an I'm, army I know what you're saying, but I'm saying, what you're saying, but you got to say something. You like it was the sauce. Like that shit felt like it created a new genre to me because it was like, I, it's, it wasn't about how good she could sing, right? Because that's what she was known for. Like her and Whit, like even look at look at Whitney, Mariah and Whitney are probably known as the greatest singers of the last 30, 40 years, right? Yeah. Whitney probably only had only thing I could think about is not right. It's okay when she was kind of like mm -hmm. talking Friday night. You and your boys run out to eat, mm -hmm. like, but that was still kind of like a different pro. But you talking about Mariah was like rapping. I came to Epipati. like it was like how the different side fuck? Of her. <laughs> how the fuck did you like? It's like you made a it's like, bro. You gave her the sauce. That's what I mean. Like, do yeah, you that, know no, that. that's what I'm saying. No, no, because I was I didn't subscribe to. It's Mariah Carey. I don't believe that I can give Mariah Carey nothing. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. I'm going into it like it's Mariah Carey. Like, I don't believe I could tell you nothing. I don't, all I could do is enhance what you already got. Mm -hmm. I don't believe I'm giving you something to make you better than what you already are. I, yeah. don't, I don't, I don't really believe that. Right. So, so even, that's what I'm saying. So with, we belong together, LA called me and he was like, you know, my favorite song that you ever made Mariah Carey is always be my baby. And he was like, um, can you make another one of them? And I'm like, I love that. <laughs> like for real, like, that's, <laughs> that's a pre like you a pro you was a producer at one point in time. You know, can <laughs> that's like somebody calling you saying make Ghostbusters again. That's the LA mind fuck though. That's the LA mind fuck. Like he go, he wants you to, he, yeah, he like, don't want you, to, he wants you to feel like yo, can you beat that? Yeah. Oh, nigga, can't. So, that's the LA mind. Well, he asked me. He's yeah. like, you know, can you make another one of them? Like LA will call me and say some shit like Jermaine, you know, um. 
I keep hearing ballots by you. Are you like babyface now? <laughs> <laughs> and he's like, I ain't heard no up tempo records from you in a long time. I'm like, what? So then I'm that yeah, he'll get my yeah, mind going. I'm it, like, get the fuck out of here. Crazy thing. So, I so, so, you know, he said that to me. He was like, you know, always be my baby is my favorite song. Do you think you can make one better than that? And I'm like, no, I don't. I didn't. I don't believe. I didn't believe it. I'm like, I don't think so. I'm saying like, no, I don't think so. I think we can go in the studio and try and make a song that exactly. Know, if that's what you want. We're going to try and make something close to that. Exactly. So Mariah came and I'm like, we got to make something that's reminiscent of always be my baby. And we went trying to beat a song that we already did and we killed it. <laughs> we made a, killed. we made, we belong together. Classic. So that's one that so, I was so, like, so I'm so shocked. Boy, like what? So what's one that you were shocked didn't. that didn't, didn't that you was like, how did that not? <clears throat> oh man. Let me think. Um, um, sweetheart. Another it, me and Mariah. That was a, that was that was a smash. You nah nah, you, but it it, it, should, goes, it, 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 it didn't go like I thought it. It, it didn't go pop. Yeah, you know. Mm. And I felt like I was looking for me to have a record with Mariah. It was gonna be a pop record. Yeah, and it didn't go pop. I spent the most money I've ever spent on a video. I spent one point five million dollars on the video. Uh, Hype did it. We went to Spain. I'm standing on top of the Guggenheim. <laughs> I'm doing everything in the world to make this song go. And I'm like, (laughs) oh, fuck this song. You know what I mean? Like, this, I should have spent this money on money and a thing. Like, (laughs) you know what I mean? I thought, but you know, it was a good look. It was me and Mariah, but it didn't didn't do what I thought it was going to do. All right. I, well, I want to fast forward a little bit real quick. So you had stronger feelings about the American Music Awards. Um, it led you to saying, like, black music, we in trouble, right? So what can we do as a culture to kind of save black music, and what's the number one obstacle black music faces today? Um, Good music is the number one obstacle that black music faces. You know, we got to start making records that matter. And um, we also have to take into consideration that uh, you an executive – or you are someone of an adult. Um, we gotta take some responsibility again. You know, I mm-hmm. got I got twelve year old daughter, and it's no artist out that my twelve year old daughter I could put on and play for her. You know, she listened mm. to Little Baby. She listened to, uh, and 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 we as a community, we think it's cool that our artists that 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 our young kids like all of the artists that we like. Um, it is cool. But it ain't cool, you know what I mean, and and it and it shouldn't ever be right. And it's crazy because when I start talking about this, people like, "Well, Jermaine, you made Bow Wow, you made Chris Crush. It's your time to make somebody else." And I shouldn't be, I don't be wanting to be responsible <laughs> for every fucking thing. Can every I just be Jermaine? Can I just yeah, be I don't, 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 exactly. don't want to be responsible. I think everybody, you know, I think NSYNC was here before. You know, you had Backstreet Boys. Uh, when I was growing up, we had New Edition. Um, you know. We had artists that younger people could listen to. Mm-hmm. I feel like we in a world now where, you know, Disney Radio don't even exist no more, mm-hmm. right? They got rid of Dis- they got radio they got rid of Radio Disney because I believe it won enough records to keep the station going. They were mm-hmm. starting to have to play music that wasn't supposed to be on the station. Um, so I feel like the responsibility of just making music and the caring about black music, like mm-hmm. you know. Your 12-year-old son or 12-year-old daughter should not have to listen to anything Mm -hmm. that me and Ray listen to. Mm -hmm. Or anything that's playing at the club should not be what you get in the car and your daughter or your son wants to listen to. Um, But we don't have an artist right now. Everybody's like, Jermaine, what about Beyonce and what about da-da-da-da? Beyonce has a few songs, but Beyonce's still an adult. It's Mm -hmm. not her job to make kiddie music. Mm -hmm. I'm saying... We should have artists that are for our youth that yes. teach them something more. Because now, even me, when I'm looking for artists and I see younger artists, the younger artists today, they're just mimicking older artists. Mm. If you look at Criss Cross and Bow Wow, Criss Cross was, songs was about missing the bus and shit that kids actually go through. Mm-hmm. Like, if you go to school every morning, 
and you ride the school bus, the public school bus or whatever it is, and you miss that motherfucker, that's the worst day of your life. <laughs> this is this is a real bad day for a young person. That's cr- that is the end of the world. I missed the bus, and there's something that I never ever, ever do. You know what again. I'm saying? Yeah. And this is this is what I'm saying. It's like younger people have life. They have something going on in their life, but people got it. We got to tap into that. What are these young kids doing? They shouldn't be just that, you know. I, every time I see a little 11, 12 year old kid with jewelry on and all that, I'm like, that's not popping. Mm-hmm. That's not it. Like, it's cute and it's cool because your daddy or your whoever got got you some jewelry, but you don't even, that's not, that's not cool. What, what, what's your, you know, as soon as kids come to the studio and they work with me, because I'm working with young Dylan, I work with Lele. I'm playing video games with them. I'm doing stuff that kids do. I'm not doing no, I'm not asking them who they jeweler is. Like, <laughs> like that's not, you know what I'm saying? That's, that's, crazy. that's, that's what it seems like is happening. Like, okay, so I want to do a little Ray Daniels quote. Earlier you said that I conduct business on a creative side the way I do because of JD. Can you tell me a little bit more about that? I don't, JD wears a lot of hats. <laughs> I feel like I wear a lot of hats. Uh, I feel like sometimes when you wear a lot of hats, people don't appreciate your greatness. So like people compare Jay to Puff on some mogul shit. Like, oh, Jay Puff. People, I mean, P- JD to Puff on some mogul shit. People compare JD to fucking Timberland and Pharrell and their run as a producer. And then you compare him to fucking uh, Sean Garrett and the Dream as a writer. And it's like, bro, he wears all these fucking hats, but he don't even try to talk. It's like, he don't even acknowledge it. It's kind of like, this is what I do. Like, it's like, it's like sometimes people are like, how you? I'm like, dog, this, this is my job. Like, my job is to come in the room and do this thing. So when I see JD, I'm always like, how the fuck does he do that? And oh, forgot, he a DJ, too. So I, I've seen him kill DJ, and he, he ain't getting, like, the, you know, the club DJ shit. He's getting the big shit. Like, so it's like, <laughs> dog, he has all these hats on. So for me, instead of coming in the room stroking my ego as a businessman or as a creative or whatever I am, I just do everything I can to perfect with the hat that I'm wearing right now. Yeah. Cause do you are like, that's crazy. Like people say JD and puff as a, as a, uh, versus, but dog, I don't know any lyrics that puff wrote. Mm, that's a whole nother aspect. No, I'm just saying like, so it's not like, it's not like you, you playing. Like I remember I was on live and he played who shot you. Oh, he played a Mary record. And you was like, no, you, did you produce that? He's like, I was an A&R and it's like, <laughs> No oh, shit, I'm just trying to be funny. I'm just saying. I'm just trying to be funny. I'm just saying, like, like he really is like, I do it. And sometimes mm-hmm. when you do it so much, you can't take the credit for it. Cause once you once one task is down, I gotta go to another one. So ain't like I ain't like this is my group. Like, dog, I was listening last night, I was just listening to Escape. And I'm like, you know, I listened to my secret and I'm like, and you hit JD, like, I'm like, hold on. The fuck? He did that. So you start being like, damn, this motherfucker did everything. No wonder he's quiet. You know what I'm trying to say? So when and, that, and sometimes we can get full of ourselves, right? Sometimes I think a big problem with the music industry, why it's not, it's not as great as it can be is because sometimes we start, like, Tehran ain't going to call itself the GOAT as long as JD is out here. Mm-hmm. That's respect for you. That's like, I'm going to say him. You know what I'm saying? Like, don't get me wrong. I changed my cards with what I did, but I did what I did because of what he did. And how many people have had that kind of run? Mm-hmm. Like, dog, it was at one point in time, I remember... It felt like at one point in your career, you just came back kind of pissed. Like, <laughs> nah, for real, no bullshit. Like, y'all don't, y'all don't know who the fuck I am. That's when you was producing for Mariah, J-Lo, and then you would be like, this so, so, and you would like do an intro, and it was like, oh, damn, he wants us to know what he do. Like, fuck. Because that's not, that wasn't what you did. It was like kind of like, you just kind of on your artist shit, but it wasn't like on early shit you wrote, you was that, but he was like, this is a so, so, and it was like, bro, you was really just like, I felt it was angry. I felt it was like, <laughs> I, felt, I felt it was like, I felt like it was like somebody said, nigga said they made hove, okay, make another ho. Oh, y'all don't know I can make another, okay, let me show y'all what the fuck it is that I do. Like, you doing, you did Chingy and, and Jason Weaver, you come with Janet, you come with all of this shit, and it just really felt like, y'all forgot who the fuck I was, man. I might need to remind you motherfuckers. It's wow because like I said, you know, you know, when I don't talk on records, niggas be mad. Like you ain't gonna talk on my record. You ain't gonna say y'all know what this is at the front of my record. When I do do it, then you saying it sound angry. It's just I don't. No, I, no, it, it didn't sound angry. It sound like you came with a vengeance. With a vengeance, like nigga, like hey, like 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 
the Avengers movie and shit. Like, oh, Thanos won? <laughs> okay, nigga, I'm coming back to take what's my. It felt like that because this is another fun fact about JD. Like, me being manager of writers and producers, most writers, I don't care who you are, whether you Sean, whether you drink, even whether you Neo, they are out there seeking opportunity. He's never done that. Yeah, I don't Like, know. he's never, he's never, he, it, it's not like he didn't work in the artist because he didn't want to. It, I mean, because he couldn't do it. It was like, I want, I, I got what I got. So when Teron was like, you know, JD ain't never tried to work for somebody. He ain't never reached out to, I was like, what the fuck? Dog, that's, that's, inc- like, Pharrell started off, I got records for this one, this one. He didn't do that. Everybody saw so he didn't do that. So I'm like, that's incredible to me. As a nigga that managed writers and producers to have him sign, you have to do that. That is almost like, that's like saying you woke up and you didn't have it. You didn't play. That's like being in the NBA, but you didn't play goddamn high school ball or college. It was like, you just, <laughs> just realized right you could in. play when you was 21 and now all of a sudden you in the NBA. Nigga, how the fuck you get here? Damn, and you, and you in the Hall of Fame. How you get here? Like, you didn't even ask? Come on, man. That's crazy. I mean, you got right to make, make your own artist. You know what I mean? Just, I, I, I always believed in creating my own. I feel like, I feel like it, it's not really that much of a challenge for me to go in the studio with an artist that's already established. Cause I don't think that, like I said, same thing I said about Mariah. I don't feel like I, and I don't take credit for Mariah Carey emancipation being what it was. I just produced it. I don't look at like, oh, I'm the guy who. What the, right. fuck, you, what the fuck you mean? You just produced it. I don't look at it. I don't take like. I mean, L.A. Reid was there. Mariah Carey's there. This is Def Jam with L.A. running it. At a, you know, I I feel like it was a whole team. I don't take total credit for it. I gave them the pieces that they needed to go out here and run the plays, but I don't actually look at, like, I'm the one. Like you say, I but gave her the sauce. I don't look at it like that. I'm, but, but by the way, that's, that's just... Good though. But that's, that, just that, yeah. that's good, though, because some people feel like they gave you the sauce so much that they mm. they, they live in the sauce. Nah, Do you know nah. I gave Mariah the fucking sauce? Right. Does anybody... You know, like, in the middle nah, of the shit. Nah, that's, that. to me, that's, I, I mean, I actually... I actually, you know... um. Oddly enough, when I was coming over here, I was trying to figure out how I'm supposed to say this because, um, you know, the 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 biggest, I think, misconception that people always try to have with me is that they, you know, like even when they talk about the Puff thing, right? It's never been an era since y'all known me that I ain't have a hit record. Not one. Facts. Era. Facts. Not an era. On either side, rap or R&B. Yeah, like never. It's but But people think like... It was a time period where you were, you never heard JD. It's never been a time period since 92 where you haven't heard me. It's never been a time period. 30 years. It has it's never been a time period recently where I haven't had a number one record. That's even that's even more what's even more crazy. Like, cause somebody I think I did an interview the other day and they was talking about relevance. And oh, he's talking about what, what 20, uh, 21 said, said about Nas, Nas and yeah. this, that, and the third. And I'm like, listen, it's people that say Jermaine Dupri is irrelevant. Right now, right? It's people that say that. That it's people that stuck on emancipation of Mimi and and confessions. And they don't and they haven't done their homework to 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 see what's in between there, right? Um that's because there's not a lot of they're not a lot of producers that have two diamond albums that they basically produced a majority of the album on that wasn't the same artist. Mm. Like that's just a statue trying to talk about. Yeah. No, no, no. I'm saying who? Like I'm saying no. I'm, no, I'm saying like because I'm th- okay. So I'm thinking about Dr. Dre, right? Yeah. Dr. Dre has Eminem, but it's just Eminem, right? Yeah. Uh, Fifty Cent sold ten million. Yeah, no, he got. But, he, Dr. Dre got a lot of. No, no, but I'm saying no. But like Fifty was still him and them, right? It was. But I'm saying like. You have two artists in. I mean, in, if you think about the last thirty years, can you name an album? Two albums more important. R and B wise, then Emancipation of Mimi, and then Confessions. R and B, absolutely not. I don't give a fuck who you name. I don't give a fuck if you say J- J- when Justin Timberlake came with that album, fire. But I'm saying you took black to the top, mm. and that's hard. You took black to the top, being authentically black. That's mm. hard. That's what I mean by the sauce. It's hard to have that sauce that everybody wants taste. Like white people, black people, <laughs> motherfuckers in Africa, everybody like the sauce. Like dog, you gotta give yourself that. You can't. I will. I can't. I mean, we we need it. No, I'm laughing. Take it. We're claiming this shit. I'm laughing because <laughs> I'm thinking about Bow Wow when he came out, right? And he had the bandana. He had the dogs, and like like you said, just allowing people to be authentically black and who they are and stepping into. We don't have enough of Bow Wow fan, huh? I was a Bow Wow fan mm. growing up. She definitely, like, she definitely, definitely she definitely went to the Millennium Tours and. <laughs> oh yeah, for sure. Who who my age wasn't 
doing that. Like that's but see, that's what we're lacking, right? What can these little no, girls? What, no, who what can we, they what have we, on what we're lacking is people saying what you just said. Who my age was not listening to Bow Wow Ooh, because and they're lying, it, right? That's what I'm saying. So this is what I'm telling you. Even in Bow Wow's story, he gets challenged because he was so young, and the people that like yourself, that were listening to him that need to say what you just said won't stand up and say it. They, like, try to act like they shy away from it or anything, trying to, like, you know. I would, I would, I would listen to Reasonable Doubt. It's yeah, like, bro, no, like, no, you, no, you hey. was you fucking with, with wow. you was bounced with me, bounced with me. You was bouncing right. to that that's shit. Don't matter so what you like, say. And, 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 and hip-hop makes, that's what I'm saying, hip-hop is not old enough, but, 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 we act like it is, but the hip hop that we we all try to gravitate to is this older, actual older hip hop that tries to like make it seem like we weren't listening to other things. You know, like when I did the rap game, right? People told me, I don't, Charlemagne said this. He was like, "Who you think gonna want to watch young kids rap on TV every week?" And it's mm. funny because now when I see people. <laughs> and everybody going crazy old mulatto and this, then and third. I'm like, you do realize that y'all told me <laughs> that nobody wasn't going to watch this show. Mm-hmm. Y'all do realize that y'all only know her because of this show. TV show. Mm-hmm. Oh, okay. Well, so for me, Bawa was like the first tangible <laughs> so superstar. No, <laughs> 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 I'm saying talking. That's great, though. He was- me, I think labels have no interest in making artists stars or better. I feel like labels are making more money ever now from streaming that they don't they could give a fuck as long as you can get to a billion streams and affect their market share. And 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 that's why I think most artists have one hit that go crazy and then it's like after that it's the big dip. Mm -hmm. Because they don't know how to develop. They don't know how to teach. They just know how to how to maximize and the the money from it. It's on this. They don't care about the artist. So for me, I think that that's the biggest problem. I don't know anything about the music industry, but like from an outsider looking in, it looks like they all just in a rush to be the first one to sign the next person that might just have a single, not even like the next superstar, because that's what it used to be. They're back not in signing. The day. They're not. The, the music business is not signing artists anymore. They're only signing records. That's where the gut feeling goes away. It's like my gut is telling me that this record has a less skip rate than other records, and I'm going to sign it, and we're going to amplify it, and we're going to make X amount of dollars from it. That's the new new model. So if you were the head of um, one of the ma- major record labels right now, like what would be your first order of business? Um, to find out who the hottest artist is in Atlanta. And how would you do that? Huh? How would you do that? How would you find? I mean, out I scour. Hard? Make a phone know, call. I scour. I move around. I go places. I see what's happening. I watch. You know what I mean? I'm looking to see what's going on. So you're still on the ground. But huh? it's not even that. Look, it's JoJo, Jr., uh, Johnny, Trey. It's you got people in here right now who's under the age of 22 right now. They know. Yeah. They, I mean, they 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 are in a place that I wouldn't go. Like they tell me about everything. Like. You got to, I agree with him, but it's. Yeah, I mean, you just got to scour. You got to see what's going on. But I mean, like I said, me personally, I wouldn't even take the job until I had that star. Mm. That's the first thing. My first thing is to tell them, let me go get the artist. You want to hire me? Let me go find the artist before I start so I can make sure I, I come in here and I'm working something. I'm not here to look at the people that work in this office. I'm here to make music. You know what I mean? Like, I don't care. Like. The secretaries and all that, I'm not coming in trying to look cool for them and they look cool for me and we lighting the candles and <laughs> just in the office. I'm not doing that. That ain't that I don't I don't do that. You know what I mean? So um I want I want I wanna come in the room with work. I wanna come in the room with artists. I wanna come in the room with my first thing that we start doing is we start operating and running the show built on the artists. You know, um one of the interesting things that people ask me about is the lotto situation, right? And uh, people don't understand is that um, I took lotto and the rest of them kids to Epic and Capital. Mm. All both labels didn't understand what they was looking at. Mm-hmm. Neither one of them. That's crazy. 
Lotto, J.I., all of them was all there. All everybody was, you know, they could have they could have signed any one of these kids from that pool, and they didn't understand what was going on. And once again, it was the same thing that I dealt with with kids again. It was like, yo, matter of oh, three hundred. I took Detronata to Kevin Lyles. He told me she raps too much. Like, well, you know, it's, it's just it's, like, you know, it, it, like I said, they just they just don't. I mean, she's young. She was young. They don't understand how to sell it. They don't know what they could do with the artist. They didn't see they don't they didn't see what I saw. Right. Um, so it's it's you know, it's it's uh, that's why I don't actually pop shit, because as much like I said, as much success as I have, I get just as many no's. And the no's probably outruled the success. So then I'm just like, I know I know I gotta sit down at the table and figure it out before I start talking to champion what I've done. It's cool. That's cool. You know. And every time I start champion what I'm doing, I always have baby face in, in the back of my mind. Like, you do realize like that don't mean nothing. That's what he told me when I told him about jump and I try to like and that might have scarred me. I was, <laughs> by the way, I was outside like I was, was I was outside when he when he ran up on he walked past and I'm like yo, and he's like oh you the little dude with the little song I'm saying little song what the fuck you talking about? I, I ain't say that to him yeah, but, but that's my that. mind was like nigga who fuck you talking about little song I know you baby face and all that but you ain't about to talk I, to I, me I, like I was, this exactly I'm 19 by the way yeah. he said this so I'm definitely cocky and he was like you know you know that song is cool but it don't mean nothing to you can do that multiple times and I'm like. Mind you, I ain't have nothing. I think I was. I think I was mixing Escape though, when he said this. But you still, you got somebody signed at sixteen. You had signed somebody to the first. Like, well, sixteen, I signed Silk Times Leather. Mm-hmm. That was prior. That was before Crisscross. So you were already getting your feet wet, huh? He was a prodigy. He was probably. Yeah, he's probably. He's probably first hip hop prodigy of the hip hop generation. Like maybe Teddy Riley, maybe. Yeah, Teddy Riley probably was the first hip hop. Yeah. But he was a. But, you know. Yeah, so you always were kind of innovative and ahead of a unique sound. Like, I can't even imagine trying to walk in an office and trying to convince them to sound bone crusher or something like that. How do you get people to believe in something that isn't already out there and you're trying to go a complete different route? How do you get people to kind of feed into your vision? Uh, on what? what an on artist? the artist, yeah. So you're coming with, like you said, young kids. You came with Bone Crusher. You're coming with people that aren't typically already in the game. You're coming with new sounds, yeah. new looks. How do you get these labels to buy into your vision? Well, with Bone Crusher, I it was I think it was All Star Weekend. Atlanta was All Star Weekend, I think, and my promotional marketing plan was to get everybody from Arista to come to Atlanta. And when they got to Atlanta, if they worked for Aero, so they was going to see what the record that they was working. They was going to mm. see what it was doing. And so my 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 plan for my company was just, we got to make sure that Never Scared is the song of the weekend. People from out of town, they come here, they going to hear Never Scared. Every club that they go to on the radio, wherever it is, I, I want this song to be that, right? So you start making this marketing plan to prove to people that got to work, to prove to people that don't believe. So when Steve Bartles and his team came to Atlanta, I took them to Compound. Or no, it wasn't Compound. What was it? Atl- uh, Vision. Huh? Vision. Yeah, I took them to Vision. And um, they saw what 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 the bone crush, they saw what Never Scared was. They saw the, the call and response, the way the people were singing the song. They went back home with a attitude that, you know, there's no shit. way we not getting this record. There's no way I'm not making every station in the world play this record. There's no way that Hot 97 in New York is not playing Bone Crusher, right? And that's all because I, you know, the marketing and mindset behind it. Um, but Atlanta, Atlanta's built on creative things like that. I have a guy that that planted a record on the DJ. That every time JD come in the club, play this song, and make him believe that my record is the shit, right? I never knew this was happening. So every time I would go into the strip club, this record would come on. I'm like, yo, this fucking song must be this, this the hottest song in the club. Yeah. They like, they like, yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 I guess they know the scheme, the yeah. scam, and everything, right? So I'm like, 
So I go to the DJ booth. I'm like, yo, who the fuck song is that? He's like, this is my man, Managed Man. I said, what? He's like, I, like dang. I said, every time I'm here, you playing a song. He's like, this is what the dancers want to hear. He giving me the yeah, whole yeah. shit. The nigga's right there over there <laughs> listening to the story. Like, he's sitting there. He put the whole play in. He put the whole play in. I'm like, well, shit. Now, mind you, I ain't heard this record outside the club. It's, yeah. no, it's, it's, it's the hottest record in the club. <laughs> I'm like, how's this the hottest record in the club? I don't hear this on the radio. Ain't nobody else. Nobody else. No other DJs know yeah. about this shit. <laughs> so I'm st- I'm confused. Like, did I find a, a diamond? Yeah. <laughs> I'm like, it's no way possible yeah. nobody else knows about this song. <laughs> but I'm going along with it. I'm like, yeah. shit, I guess nobody else know. So I sign a nigga. I sign a nigga. I take his song. I say, yo, I'm going to put me a verse on the second. Ver- I'm going to yeah. put me on the second verse. And I put the song on my album. But he he tricked me with this marketing scheme in the club. By, by the way, the song is jamming. Yeah. But it still wasn't what he made it seem. Mm-hmm. And he gave the song to DJ. The DJ, you know what I mean? The DJ put the move on. That type of stuff makes me think like, oh, oh I got you niggas. I'm going to figure out something. <laughs> I'm going to figure out me Monty something out. too. I'm everybody here coming to Magic City tonight. Play that song like a hundred times. You're going to do the same on. move. You yeah, see yeah, work. You know? so, so it's all Atlanta creativeness. So, so JD, I don't know if you know, the show is called The God Show. It stands for Ghosts and Underdogs. So what I did was I put together my JD goat list of songs you written, produced, and I put my underdog list. So I'm going to tell you that list right now. But right after that, I'm going to ask you a question. I'm going to get you ready for the question. Okay. The question that I have, well, the question is, is that Atlanta, being an Atlantan, I'm going to want your... Goat list of who helped make the city what they are, and the underdog list of who helped make the city, but people might not know. All right, but I'm gonna go first, right? So my so here's my goat list for you. Number Usher, nice and slow. Number one, uh, Mariah Carey, it's like that. Escape, just kick it. Nigga, I could tell you a story about that record. I remember being on the bus stop, 14 years old, got me rolling. The girls was just just, and that was the first time girls was taking pride in singing a female record. It felt young. I know you did this shit, man. It's crazy. Uh, <laughs> Mariah Carey, we belong together. Mm-hmm. And Usher, you got it bad. So that's my list okay. for your goats, right? But here's my underdog list that I'm like, niggas really don't know. Like, this is my shit. By the way, this is all my, my shit, but this is my shit that I know those first five by name, everybody know, but this is my shit that if you don't know, I don't give a fuck. It's my shit. <laughs> Escape, you're my little secret. The Brat, give it to you remix. By the way, we, you had the first female rapper ever go platinum, right? We ain't even got to that. We've been doing all this talking. We ain't even talked about the first female rapper ever go platinum in the female rap era. You got, but the brat give it to you. Uh, this is how you know I'm a fan. Mace, you Mace, Life of 70, 1472, Lil' Kim, you get dealt with. Mm. That was actually the first song that made me fuck with Mace. Because mm. Mace was kind of like, he was like Puff Jr. to me. And that was the first time I heard him like rap on some like, I know you heard my crazy flow, but it come my lit. And I was like, fire. And the last <laughs> one is, and the last one is, I gotta beat Jagged Edge. Because niggas don't know that shit fucked Atlanta up. Yeah. He, when Jagged has got to be dropped, the whole city was, it was like, that's our group. By the way, me and JD had another argument about uh, Cupid. <laughs> <laughs> I, said, I said Cupid. By the way, I think Jagged Edge has the most incredible. I think we was arguing 112 versus Jagged Edge. And I was just like, I don't, I don't think like Jagged Edge had a song better than Cupid. But we, was, we got to table that for something else. I, I just had to tell you we argued about that. Hear me out. Because he going to win. Y'all, y'all niggas know him. I'm, I'm in y'all my team. He's still gonna beat me. <laughs> but look, no. So I wanted to say, uh, but if you had to put Atlanta, Mount Rushmore, and for the sake of this show, it's five people on it, and I'm gonna actually say you have to include yourself. I'm not gonna let you exclude yourself on the Atlanta goat list of who made this city, this scene, what it is. Who would be the other four you add on the Mount Rushmore with yourself? I'm not letting you take yourself off. We're not letting you play humble today. Who would you add on the Mount Rushmore? Um, Dallas. My nigga. Um, L.A. Reid. Okay. And um, two more. He can be good about this. I represent him and Mount Rushmore. Two more? Because it's, 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 it's five. five. It's you, mm-hmm. L.A. Reid, Dallas Austin. Two, two more. Two more. Um, That's hard. 
I mean, I, it's, a, it's 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 really a toss up. I think like, um, but I'm gonna say I'm gonna say I'm gonna say Outcast. I'm gonna put them right there. Um, and, and that they hold the two the number two space, even though they should be yeah. part of the L.A. Yeah, because they came with L.A. But I but I feel like, um, Outkast, um, the lingo of Atlanta, the Southern draw pride of, of Atlanta, um, the the neighborhoods. Yes, recognizing the neighborhoods of Atlanta. First came, time I ever heard came from, from Outkast. Outkast. You know, always say that. Yeah, it came from Outkast, so like them, them, pe- letting people pay attention to the SWATs. Yeah, you know what I mean, oh, national they, got skanks. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. everybody, like it was yeah, delicious. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah. Outkast, we got one more. No, nah, that's it. They no, no. the two spots. Oh, you want? Oh, okay. He yeah. broke over yeah. two. Okay, cool. two guys. Now, now give me your. Now, give me your. Now, no, 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 we're gonna give it to him. That's cool. That's cool. We're gonna give it to him. Give, give me your five underdogs that if you don't, if you know, you know. Because you have to be like here to know. Five underdogs. Um one important person to Atlanta music scene was Ian Burke. Ian Burke. And he don't one. you know, he don't he, he's like a guy that didn't get the credit for what he was doing. I love that. He's a guy that didn't get the the money or even the position. My my first big mean I ever had in the city of Atlanta was with Ian Burke. Yeah. I was coming up. Well, Ian Burke, I'm gonna say, Ian Burke introduced me to organized noise. He introduced me to Left Eye. He introduced me to T Boz. He introduced me to. But for me, Ian Burke was the guy that I'm talking about when when I was young. I didn't know nobody. Once I met Ian, he introduced me to a photographer who actually took pictures of Criss Cross when I didn't have no money. Mm. Like he was that guy that was like the connector to me. Uh, he introduced me to Goody Mob. He introduced me to. Um, I mean, he introduced my, I think Ian is responsible for Arrested Development. I think Ian is responsible, like, not responsible for them, but, but, but he, he introduced played, he played them role, yeah. and I, to and everybody. Did he do something with Escape, too? Yeah, he brought Escape to my house um, for my birthday party. So he introduced me to Escape. He was he was the go, go-to guy to me that if you wanted to meet somebody that was going, moving around the city, Ian was the guy that you know. At least for me, I don't no, know. That, that was my, that was my first meeting I ever had. Yeah, for Despite anybody the music business of of importance was Ian Burke in Atlanta. Yeah, so I don't, I don't, you know. Um, and then besides that is these artists, you know, Shadi. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Shadi, yeah, Shadi, Kilo, and Raheem. That's fine. And then and then yeah, we'll I would have to put put DJ Toomp in there because Toomp is the person who was the producer of uh, Raheem. And that's where I know DJ Toomp from. It's like these guys was making hip hop before me. Those four dudes right there, DJ Toomp, Shadi, um, and I think Toomp was also Shadi's DJ. Mm. So Toomp was also Shadi's DJ. So Toomp, Shadi, Kilo, I mean, well, Raheem, then Kilo. Now, this is, by the way, this is like a conversation I always wanted to have. Because you are who you are, I just have to ask you this. You probably already know, but I want your top five favorite rappers. Your personal top five. Um, J. Big, Slick Rick, um, Slick Rick the Ruler, MC Ricky D. He's getting very New York vibes. I mean, it get, that's why I want to say because he's, he's a, a hip hop aficionado. He's a hip hop aficionado. That's why I want to ask. It get, him. it get, it get a little cloudy just because. I mean, I listen to everything. That's um, what I'm saying. Your personal yeah, favorite yeah, five. Yeah, I MCs. listen to everything. I mean, I think, and then it's like, cause, cause that 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 whole thing about that is that like people lose sight of like. They, it's a timing thing or this, that, yeah. and the third. And it's like... Um, hey, dog, you've been relevant 30 years in this shit. So for me, it's not like... Not me. I'm not me. me. I'm, I'm talking no, about I'm just saying, But I'm saying that because of you, like, it's certain people who you want to know theirs because they've touched so much. So it's like, who the fuck are yours? Like... Yeah, I think... I mean, you know... Um, 
I, I got to I got to I got to say I think like Rakim um because Rakim actually took me to that space of memorizing raps mm. without before Biggie and Jay um and before Slick Rick and he's the guy that I I started memorizing Rakim rap records and like knowing these songs and rapping like that and being able to understand flow and metaphors and all of that, Rakim definitely was the person that put me in that mindset. Um, and then, man, in between there, it's like, it's a, so many artists. Because <laughs> you friends with a lot of these people. That's why I'm like, who's it's, your favorite? It's so many artists that's like a favorite. You know? Jay Big, um, Slick Rick, But Rakim. these are like the guys that I have. This is your guys, though. This is your personal I, shit. That I have to like listen to, that I would have to listen to on a day-to-day basis. Um... Um, but man, let me think. I'm trying to think. Uh, for pure rapping, just yours. This is yeah, yours. No, 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 no. Yeah. I'm saying. I'm just saying. I'm, I'm throwing this out there <laughs> as a thing. <laughs> for pure rapping, right? Um, I'm like holding my breath. That's crazy. That's a crazy one. I think just just like yeah, like and 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 his body of work is not a lot, right? But I just felt like pure rapping and just like creativity. One of my favorite rappers is is in a crew that's yeah. my favorite crew, which is the Dog Pound. But I think like corrupt, corrupt. Oh wow, was like. Raise your head, like yeah, then people get excited because he said corrupt, corrupt. But that's what I like though, because I, Co- I like corrupt, I like- corrupt flow. And where he, the way he came at the time that he came, was well, nobody doing that. Like not, you know. And he also, he also brought a mindset. He's from Philly, but he moved to L.A. So then he also turned into a Cali dude that's from the north. Yeah. So then, so he's an East Coast West Coast nigga that combined rapping with L.A. Lingo. That's fire. Right? Mm-hmm. And he just was like, I don't know, man. It's just like Shout out to Corrupt. I mean That's Snoop amazing. Snoop and Snoop and Daz, they they that them as a crew, period. But corrupt young Gotti was just like something that was just like nasty. He got he got verses now. If you go back and see his verses, the, his cadence is just it's it's nasty. Man, I Go ahead. I was. I'm done. I, I was going to ask one more. Then Tamir got one more. Because you hear. You, no, because you hear. I have to ask you. Yeah. Give me your five, and you don't have to exclude, put yourself on this list. Five producer, Mount Rushmore for you. I feel like if I had to, I feel like I could guess two of them, but I don't want to say it. I feel like I know two of them. <laughs> I mean, Quincy Jones. Quincy Jones is my. He was. He was one of the two. Doctor Dre. Doctor Dre. Um. Um. I mean, L.A. and Babyface. L.A. and Face. And, and Barry Gordy. Barry Gordy. There's nobody wrote better songs than Barry Gordy, as producer and songwriter. Not, I mean, I heard it through the grapevine. These songs will last longer than everybody in this room. <laughs> they have last. They have outlasted niggas longer than that, and they, them songs will continue. He has, he has the biggest songs of anybody, to me, in history that will outlast everybody. I heard it through the grapevine. How do you write that? Yeah. How do you produce that? You know, it's like that's that's ridiculous to me. So I, I would say mine is Barry Gordy. Um, Quincy Jones. His partner was Smokey Robinson. So I got to be there. But so my best mm-hmm. case then you got to put L.A. and Face together as one. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. So, so then you got one more then because you got Barry Gordy, <laughs> Face and Reed, um, uh, Quincy Jones, Doctor Dre. Doctor Dre. You got one more. Jimmy and Terry, like what? Mm. It was what I thought you going. I'll tell you off camera. I want to put it on, but it was one person I just knew was on your list. Only one I knew was Quincy Jones. I mean, I ain't gonna lie. Who you I, thought? Oh, it was I, Teddy. I, Teddy. That's well, what I thought. I mean, Teddy. Listen, because when you I, came in the I, game, you was kind of no, like, no, no. I am. Yeah. I Teddy Riley is my. That's who I want to be. That's what I'm about to, to say. The, like to Teddy this, Riley to this day to this day. But something about Teddy songs to people have not aged well because people don't seem to talk about Teddy the way that I feel like they do. And I feel so, I feel disrespected when niggas don't be saying Teddy Riley. That's why I got, that's why the point of this so show. Yeah, so, I, so, like, so like, listen, I'm, I'm gonna, 
I'm gonna take Barry and Smokey off the list because they too old. Yeah. Just say they old. Yeah, they old. I'm gonna put Teddy Riley on my list because he is. You know, and uh, you know, I would. That, that was my guess. He, by the way, I was, no, about like, I was about like, I was about like, Teddy is at the top. Yeah, they on your Mount Rushmore. Like, yeah. I just feel like if it's if it, I I was in a creative battling era though. You cannot put Barry Gordy in that battle. You know, it's like head up. With, he can't. Nobody could do verses with him. Can I get Can I get your fun fact? I only noticed because I watched Barry Gordy documentary. You know, on Coming to America, Eddie Murphy is singing that song, To Be Loved. Mm -hmm. That was the first record Barry Gordy. That's the first hit record he ever made. See, that's what I'm saying. Look at that. I thought thought he was making up that song in the movie. I never knew that that was a real song. (laughs) To Be Loved. Yeah, To Be Loved. I ain't gonna lie, man. I just, I'm a rap. And, man, I appreciate you showing up. On some man shit, this means a lot to me. Because being an executive, it's hard to put yourself out there. And you just never know how your peers gonna receive it. Mm-hmm. And you know, when we started this shit, I was always afraid. Like, and so that's why anytime you hit me, I'm like, no bullshit. J- JD, hit me. Fuck what I do now. Because <laughs> it was like, I appreciate that because it's hard to do this shit. But man, you're literally <laughs> one of my idols. I'm from Southside. We did no it. No way. You're from the Southside. You from Harlem, right? <laughs> when you did Ron Browse, did I let when you did Ron Browse, I let you breathe, right? I'm just saying, like on some man, because you gotta understand something. You don't know nothing about the music business. You are curious mind. Mm-hmm. I am in it. So a lot of this shit is like, how people gonna feel if I like when I put out the top five, I was you nigga, I mean phone calls I called. What the fuck is wrong? I'm like, nigga, it's that's the whole point of it. This conversation, man, but I appreciate you coming. Wait, like, I have I have something to ask him before I'm he done. goes. Okay, wait, before you go, I got two more things I wanna ask you. Um, what do people need in order to be successful in the music industry right now? Like, just what are some characteristics they need? What do they need to have in order to be successful in the music industry talent. today? Talent, that has been a big debate. A debate about yeah, talent? because we've been saying that's what the industry is lacking now. It's like these quick songs and not really longevity and actual talent. So yeah. I'm surprised to hear you say that. So talent's one of those things. What else do you think what they need to have? I mean, because... Take talent and take them to the Because if you, you know... um. Well, I mean, you answered the question to be, you said to be successful. Mm-hmm. You got to have talent to be successful. Quick success is a different story. Mm-hmm. If you want that quick stop at the gas station success, <laughs> then, you know, you could damn near do anything at this point in time, you know. Uh, it, that's nothing. But if you want to be successful as a musician and you don't want to, like, wake up two years from now and have to start working at the gas station, um, and be a successful musician, you got to have talent. If you have talent, the talent will outrule anything and it will outweigh anything and it will continue to continue to keep helping you um, throughout whatever, you know, ups and downs that you have in life. You're going to have, the talent is going to be there. And if you put the talent first and make sure that people understand the talent, it will definitely stand out there and be, be, be loud and people have to come see it, especially in this time. We're in an era where everyone is not talented. So when people go looking for talent, um, those that are talented are the ones that's gonna get the, the first call. You know, like look at say, like look at um y'all laughing, I'm saying for real. Look, <laughs> look at look at look at D Nice, right? D Nice from Boogie Down Productions. D Nice went from first of all. Hip hop is not that old, so when people look at it, they look at it like D Nice, his life just transferred into something. Hip hop is only fifty years old. I have to keep saying this. So D Nice, his first part of his career was to be the DJ, or, or rap, or be a part of Boogie Down Productions, and he made records and he did what he did. The second part of his life was he became a DJ, and he became super talented at DJing, and. At a time when people were all at their house paying attention to talent. Mm -hmm. By the way, every DJ, myself, everybody was on Instagram trying to make their little DJ debut, Mm -hmm. right? And his talent broke through. Mm -hmm. His talent made Instagram clear him Mm -hmm. to play all the music. His talent made it, made everybody call him. His talent made... Michelle Obama listened to him and become her official DJ. His talent just burst through. And now D-Nice is like one of the highest paid DJs in the world, right? That's all pure talent. That's not him on the internet doing no dumb shit. That's him 
actually, he stayed up one night and DJed for 24 hours. Mm. And he DJed music while people were asleep. And you woke up, he still was going. And he, was, and he didn't play the same records, by the way. He played all new music for 24 hours. Not new music. He played records that, that he, didn't, he didn't repeat the didn't same, play the same records, song, exactly. Right? That's talent. Just the fact that you even know that much music to play for 24 hours. There's <laughs> niggas that can't even DJ for 30 minutes out here. So it's the talent thing. It's all about talent. All right. And in closing, I got to ask you. Oh, yeah. I forgot. I close the Hello. Do you consider yourself a goat or underdog? Both. Why? I mean, I'm, I'm an underdog. <laughs> in what we, aspect do you think you're an underdog, though? I mean, we going into this versus me and Puff. I'm the underdog. Is there a date? What Is the smoke? Date? Huh? Is there a date on this versus? Uh, I can't. <laughs> oh, come on now. I mean, it's happening. I just know it's happening. But well, I'm I'm going in there. Where's it going to happen? Is it going to be in New York or Atlanta? Or y'all going to do a mutual? No, it's going to be here. It's going to be here. It's going to be here in Atlanta. Oh, now, trust me. I'm going to be hitting somebody from his team. Like, oh, we need it's, to go. It's going to be here. <laughs> I mean, we talk about doing them both. Yeah. Yeah. We talk about doing them in both places. But I, I, I think it's going to be here in Atlanta. But I'm going in as an underdog. You know, because most. And, and, and a dangerous underdog, too, for those out there that, that really feel like it's not. It could, and I say danger because people don't under really know all my records. We know all Puff songs. Y'all know, y'all can name all Puff. Everybody in this room can name all Puff records. He don't have no hidden records that I'm like, oh, I didn't know he did. Mm-hmm. I got a bunch of records. In I got a bunch of records that he don't even really be thinking about. Mm-hmm. Like people just be talking about, you know, they start screaming Usher and they start screaming Mariah. That's another thing. Like people say. Jermaine Dupree, you was one of the hottest producers in the 90s. Do you know that Confessions and, and Bow Wow, Confessions, and Emancipation of Mimi is all 2000. Mm-hmm. It's the, the whole 2000, the era of 2000s. Like, people actually don't even be, like, thinking about that, right? So that's why I was telling Puff on the phone that day. I'm like, I don't actually recall Bad Boy having a record on 106 in part when Bow Wow came out. I don't. Talk about shit. Mm. Talk about shit. I, I listen. I love it. <laughs> I don't. I don't know. I mean, I, you know, <laughs> I love it. Not, not that could go up against Bow Wow, and and that's the thing. Like when you see people on Instagram, this is what I was saying about you. That I was saying out in. You see people on Instagram, they be and when they talk about the battle, they like, what you gonna do? Play them little Bow Wow records, and I'm like, so you gonna act like you wanna listen to them little Bow Wow records? You gonna act like that? That's what we gonna do. Like, that's what I'm saying. Like, why do why do people why do you think people do that? I'm gonna ask you a question. <laughs> because there's a I think it was just a lack in him being able to transfer from being a kid star to adult star. So they kind of just have this oh he was a kid thing in his in their head. So they kind of downplay it. But like, it was an error. Like I was singing like you on my voicemail with my boyfriend when I was 16. Like we were recording. Like it was a thing. Like I don't care what anybody says. Like y'all gotta give Bow Wow his flowers. Like and like you said, there would be no other little without Bow Wow. And I think that that's a big takeaway for me. So but that's what I think the disconnect is. Harlem gave Atlanta some motherfucking credit. That's incredible. <laughs> we might need to put that some motherfucking record book right here. Harlem gave Atlanta some credit. That's right, it. But Thank you. the biggest things I got from you today was be selfless, be confident, pay attention and always apply it. Like, you didn't just pay attention to what was going on around you. You applied it to your everyday life and to your artists and everything you wanted to do moving forward. So I do want to thank you for taking your time out and come on the show. Ray, I know you got something. I'm going to say, the one thing that I think that if you're watching this to be great, you should know, is that he always tried to beat himself. Mm-hmm. He said, I wrote a record, got signed. I know I could do better. And I feel like talent be sometimes feeling like, I don't want to ask a good enough talent around me. I want a nigga that's always like, I could do better because that that the only person you're really competing against is yourself. I mean, that's one of the things that people don't understand about my production skill. Like when when we make it, like say for instance, Usher album, we've been working on for ten years. <laughs> uh, <laughs> um, By the way, Usher owes me a bottle. We was in the club the other night. I sent him one. He told me he's gonna send us one. He owe a bottle. He owe you a bottle. He owe, he, and, 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 and he tried to give me the bottle. What's the Azul? 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 He was okay. trying to give me by Azul. I was like, no, Casamigos, nigga. Oh, Casamigos. You, Usher, nigga. You, sent me a, you sent me a bottle of Azul. I'm going to hit him and Keith and Jen about I, that one. I think one of the crazy <laughs> things about it is, is like when L.A. comes to the studio and he wants to listen to music, if I see his reaction not what I want it to be, I'll go make a new song. I'm not one of these producers that, that try to beat you in the head about the song that I got, even though I know it's a hit. 
I'm not going to, if you don't think it's a hit, then I'm going to go make another song. I'm trying to find your algorithm until, until you scream at me. I'm not screaming at you. You know, it's been records where I'd be like, oh, y'all don't, y'all ain't fucking with that. Okay, cool. I'm not going to keep, I'm not going to beat you in the head about it. Cause I know that niggas don't see what I see. And I know that niggas don't hear what I hear. So I'm not even going to try to like explain it to you. You won't get this. Yeah. You don't get this song. Yeah. Nigga, this is the best song yeah. in the world. Yeah. I'm not doing yeah. it. I'm not going through that energy. I'm going to just go write a new song. I'm going to go write a song that I feel like, okay, this is what I think you like. Goat and shit. I keep trying until it happens. So Goat conversation. By the way, next time you do it, the and I mean, I need an invite. I hit him. I hit you one day like, yo, bro, I need to come. Yeah. I come over. I'll I come out. We li- our studio's literally right next to each other. Match. I want to. I want to be in the screaming match. Yeah, that's a screaming match. But y'all, like raise alley. but um, yeah, I know. But thank you once again. Nobody has an excuse no more. JD came. Let's get it. Oh yeah, I want to. Yeah, let me say this too. Let me say this. I I. You know. I hit him and he said, he said, JD, you know, you gotta come talk, man. You know, people need to hear you. And as a as a rule of teaching for anybody out there trying to be an entrepreneur, like always listen to younger people around you. Um, they 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 um they don't know everything, but they know something. Yep. Right. And him saying that to me, I didn't know that I should come do this or not. I don't care to talk about what I do. Never talk. Um, I just do it. But at the same time, um, this is a new era of life. This is a new wave that people are on and people are paying attention to podcasts um, in a way that i never seen it before. So, you know, and, you know, before my story gets even further along and I have not enough hours to talk about myself... I should probably start talking about it <laughs> in some kind of space. So I just was like paying attention to him saying, JD, you got to come on and you got to talk. You know what I mean? I, you hold information. I do hold the information. This is a true fact. It's things that I know that a lot of people don't know. Um, it's a place that I grew up in, in hip hop, that only me and one other person grew up in, which is Chad Elliott. So, Shout out um, to CEO Chad Elliott. You know, so with that being said, I know I hold the information, but... I needed him to tell me, like, we need JD, to hear from you. JD, we need to hear it. We need to hear you come talk. So just take me coming here as an example that you got to put your foot forward and you got to come do what you got to do and uh, never stop working. That's it. it. All right. Thank you, guys. It's the God Show. It's a wrap. <laughs>